I remember. I've got. Yeah, a, I was reading through that one book earlier. What was it? The history of the world. I've got good. Some, got some good sections on Egypt. Wait, on is it a British world. one from like seventeen hundreds or eighteen hundreds? It's from sixteen hundreds by Dennis Patel, or as it's written on the cover, the learned Dionysus Petavius. Huh. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm not even going to bother with an intro. Fuck it. People can just think that they've fallen into a yeah. midstream. <laughs> They'll have no idea what's going on. Um, but I tell you what we can do. We've got a little banner. Look at that. Maps of Egypt. So keep us on topic. We can uh, do you like that? And it's good, doesn't mm-hmm. it? Nice. I like it. It's like we're yeah, it's like we're the news. <laughs> Important in this day and age if you're escaping news. Gaza. BBC Historia. That's a different channel. Let's start. So we'll start with talking about are unusual images that we get coming out of Egypt at uh, in the early periods. Let's talk about some of the, the things wrong with this image. It's pretty packed. It's pretty packed close. Now, we've got here what is presumably the course of the Nile. And mm. we can see that it's situated almost right on the banks of what is considered our pyramids. Now, this is listed as being the Pyramids of Giza in its photo, and that would be um, that would be solidified by the fact that we've got the Sphinx down here on the right, that it's mm-hmm. a very odd design for the Sphinx. We can see what looks like curly or frizzy hair. Yeah, you'd almost think back. like Hanoverian style curls, you know, the judges, British judges, those wigs. Yes, it, defi- it definitely doesn't but, look like a headdress. You know, yeah, we had a, uh, we had Greek sphinxes, and even they had similar, you know, because they had Greek curly hair. Right. So this is this is what you find with a Greek sphinx. Look at that. <laughs> curly hair. Curly hair. Take our babies. Look, long, long flowing long, hair on you. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's uh, like yeah, well, a, yeah, the it's like a bit of a what do we call it? Uh, a splicing of creatures together. Um we'll move on. It might come back to me in a minute. Yeah. Anyway, but you know, you can see like this image here. Mm-hmm. With that, I feel like obviously this one isn't winged though. That's the difference. Where it doesn't look like it's got wings. So if we see a normal sphinx, if a normal sphinx or the sphinx, it's supposed to look like this. Very manly man with his pharaoh mm-hmm. helmet on, no wings, obviously, definitely no tits. Although <laughs> you could you kind of see with this, maybe yeah, they've shaved the tits the off. Pharaohs. So oh, Br- yeah. the British soldiers at the Sphinx. I like this image because it just it feels like I'm looking at the same Sphinx, but it's almost different, isn't it? it there's something about it which is, uh, yeah, it's, it it looks more detailed to me in the eyes, definitely. Yeah, those eyes look pretty clear cut. Like, um... unfortunately, it's hard to get uh, full screen yeah, images on this anymore. Yeah, there you go. So have a look at that. Look at that. Yeah, they've definitely reworked the edges, haven't they? Mm. Look. Oh, yeah, that's different. Look. That's a bit it's shoddy, subtle. It's oh, yeah. subtle, but look at it's... the edges. It's like it's like they've torn off the If the I hair. recall, they have done res- restoration work, you know, as with every Well, obviously they've problem. uncovered they've uncovered all this section, and they've I do walked, find it very interesting as well. And then they've covered up <laughs> Well, yeah, the bits that are uncovered obviously have been protected from the rain and the weathering, and they're still like stones. Whereas this bit on top has just turned rain. into this, you know, because, well, look, this is how buried it was when the British soldiers were there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that obviously shows where, you know, the picture of the head sticking out the sand comes from, doesn't it? Well, the, or, that's a possibility. Yes. Well, yeah, we're going to go back to that because. There's this that we'll come to. We'll come through more in a bit, yeah. but um, well, they're right in the middle. We, is our... we can we can see this image of Le Sphinx, and mm. <clears throat> once again, we do have some differences. So, well, with that one, we'll... absolutely. That look, it looks like the um, it looks like the help the crown. What do you call it? Is the headpiece is being propped up by cement in the new one. In the modern and picture. notice how the nose is apparently still here in this image. Mm-hmm. Ah, because the nose, as we know, was was apparently knocked off by British soldiers, wasn't it? Wasn't I, it shot I off didn't. I didn't even clock 
Yeah. So yeah, we we actually have a we have a nose. It looks like it's possibly a bent nose, or maybe that's destruction. But maybe this guy had a broken nose. I don't know. Um, and we can see much more headdress design, which matches this image that we saw. If we look at that, we can zoom mm, in. A lot. It's a lot closer. You can see the lines all here going like this. Comparing that to but even then, no nose. Yeah. Yeah, but well, even then, no nose. And have they reworked the eyes to look more Egyptian or something? When we come to this image, you can see that mm, this yeah. looks like it's been rebuilt at the back. And then underneath, completely propped up by cement or bricks or whatever. Well, yeah. Right there. Yeah, definitely. Um, and you, yeah, this is the bit here. Look at that neck piece. Mm. Mm -hmm. That looks exactly like that bit here. So yeah. yes, they've 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 filled that up and blocked and and turned it back into a headdress or something. But going to our image, we clearly see the Sphinx has a fully designed body. Now, if you were visiting in the 14, 15, 13, 12, whenever you were visiting, if you saw the Sphinx, how would you even know it was the Sphinx like without having something to reference, you know? How how would you even know these legs were underground? These feet that mm. are a big bit like you know, if you just see the head, like you said, if you just what see if the it's head. a lion's mane. <laughs> what if it yeah, genuinely was just a lion uh, of Judah? Was, um oh yeah, yeah. Um what was it? Graham Hancock said that the Sphinx was built, you know, twelve thousand years ago. Uh, because you know, that's the only date that can match the rain damage on the bottom of it. And he said it was a lion originally facing. Would would twelve thousand years ago? Yeah, would twelve thousand years ago put us in the age of Leo? I I don't know. That'd be a nice, interesting so. thing to check. I think I think that was the. Yeah. Um, That'd be something to to double check because uh, it, it's every two thousand one hundred and sixty years or whereabouts we go between ages. Eleven thousand BC, yeah, which is approximately that's the age. That was when it was. Yeah, 11,000 BC. Wow. Yeah. So, okay. So, yeah, there you go. That actually does match the, the year of the line. Because we've talked about this before, um, about obviously not online, uh, about the the astrological aspects to essentially the mm. same god, the you know the transition from being a goat to being a fish to yeah. being a man. Just trans just transition through the ages. Yeah, exactly. Aries, obviously, yeah. the goat. And you see Whichever that with god's the, the in Jews. charge. <laughs> yeah, and you see that the, the Jews still blowing the ram's horn because they were worshipping the ram but then they changed to worship the fish with christianity which is why you have things like the Piscica pisces that we talked about um or mm -hmm. pixis and you see that you know the fish emblem the aisa fish symbol for christianity because he is the, the half man half fish and then we're mm -hmm. moving into the age of aquarius now which is usually a man carrying a pail of water and that's exactly what they say in the bible or jesus says go to the you know go find the man with a pail of water and wait for me there or the house of the man <laughs> with the pail of water and wait for me there and I'll meet you there. He's literally saying, I'll meet you in Aquarius. <laughs> yeah. but, go into um, this much deeper but I'll get off topic. <laughs> yeah. So definitely we'll, we'll have Lots a look at this. Now, this is interesting because you said about the head good. in the sand. Ooh. Yeah. You said about the head mm -hmm. in the sand. That's a so, completely different head. Yeah. I mean, for one, it looks like it's bald. Hmm. Nothing hmm. against that. Or crop, short, um, crop hair back, maybe. Yeah, it definitely looks like short hair, and you'd you'd want to believe it's still female, considering <laughs> that looks like a pair of jugs. Mm -hmm. And I can't tell whether these spikes coming up are supposed to reference wings. I'm you not see, sure just if here, I can see looks, that. Um, I'll zoom in as much as I can. There right. we go. Do you see how there's just some one, two, three? They could almost be. Are they not people? The Are they not meant to be people? Yeah, yeah. Oh right, right. Well, yeah. There's people behind, so it could definitely yeah. be people. But I'm just saying, I could. I wasn't sure if this behind is ground or wings, but I think it is ground. I'm just uh -huh. offering up alternatives. But <laughs> this is described as being. Yeah, it's described as being a colossal head in a lot of the um, the old translations and stuff. They call them colossus heads. Now, uh, Colossus, obviously, like Colossus of Rhodes, they're just giant human statues. So the idea was, are these things buried up to their feet in, in the sand? Is this maybe like a statue marriage. going all the way down? Yeah, possibly. Um, I mean, I in Aswan, 
in Aswan, oh, I'll bring it up. In Aswan, we've got the statue of Osiris, which is there. We go. This is an Alamy picture, but why are they so annoying? You ain't got it up, mate. I know. I'm bringing it up. Um, um, it's just I'm getting through Alamy, and there. They, I swear, <laughs> Alamy owns every image in the world. <laughs> That's where the world's going. Alamy owns everything. But this in Aswan get a, get a is, okay, images. Is, is an unfinished, you know, uh, statue of Osiris that they found. And mm. near here is exactly where they find the unfinished obelisk of Aswan, which I'll bring up as well. Uh -huh. So, you know, these guys were building gigantic stuff. They were taking giant Because you can see this. Out. Exactly. Look at that. You know, you've got people walking mm -hmm. on that. And this this will actually come back to what we were going to we talk about with some of the maps as well because we'll bring up that map with the canal system mm -hmm. because that is definitely wants something to bring up. Although I find the the official explanation of how they get this out insane. Apparently, they would fill this with water and use the water to raise it up. Oh, I and love I'm, it. I, I love it. I just, <laughs> I just, I still just don't understand how that would even work. What <laughs> you a know, like, bro. No, I mean, um, I understand that bit. I'm just, it's just it's, so big and it's just. Do you, you have to make it buoyant in the water. Is that stone buoyant or do you have to make the water, mix the water with something or. Make it like a really mm. salty water. I don't know. Um, How can you make that more buoyant? But it's, you know, it's an impossible task, isn't it? And then Is as that well. Where we you have to, acoustics? Well, we have to deal with the fact that the Nile isn't exactly built mm -hmm. for transporting giant things down it mm -hmm. i mean if you look at it it's uh you know a lot of it has very shallow uh shallow beaches that are quite mossy um I, i'm trying to think of the best word for this <laughs> kind of like marshy. very marshy yeah very marshy kind of low land area where the water just doesn't really have a very defined edge you know so mm -hmm. it must be one of the hardest yeah, things to navigate with plane. deep yeah, yeah, without, you know, with deep water boats, you're going to have a, a big issue. And that's going to obviously displace a lot of water, whatever ship that's carried on. Presumably, it would just be a gigantic raft that, that they somehow get that onto. I mean, I can't imagine them floating it down without some kind of extra buoyancy. But mm. presumably, how would they get it out then if that was the case? Helium so, balloons. Helium balloons, exactly. Yeah. So, like I say, with these statues of Osiris... And the uh, the obelisk, and the fact that we know that the casings for the pyramids, the stones mm. for the casings, were all quarried here in Aswan. And where so, they went is not close to the Nile. It's not particularly close. No. We have this. That when we're looking at this image, there's a few inconsistencies we want to talk about. One, the pyramids are extremely pointy. Mm. Two, there are way too many of them. And they don't seem to be in the same uniform positions. We see this yeah. kind of layout of Orion's belt, and it's then sort we of also have in different directions. They're like they're wonky. This this one up at the front, this small one, is a built on a hill. It's on a tilt. And this one here, right in the middle, appears. I'm not 100 percent sure, but it appears to have some kind of arched doorway. Oh yeah, right you are. If we the one in front's on a pedestal, really I see. Yeah, yeah, this one has this uh, this yeah. almost obelisk like pedestal, yeah. yeah. On the small one. And, yeah. and like I say, way too many. Colossal head right here in the middle, just staring at them. And mm -hmm. then what appears to be our Sphinx, although compared to the Sphinx, if this is a J, obviously size is going to be difficult. But if these people mm -hmm. were the correct size, then the Sphinx is way too small, I think. Mm -hmm. um, well, or well, not way bit, too small, but a, a bit too small. There's a very uh, good chance artists taking some liberties here. yeah yeah <laughs> well um, that, that those are gorgeous but what, the what's the interesting yes exactly it's interesting is that giza presumably giza yeah. is situated yeah. on the east of the river now officially i'm not sure if the river ever flowed this close but i think it is it's a possibility very much that I if we go at and... one point i read it recently actually about the Nile having once flowed next to the pyramids, but so would we'd be looking at somewhere here? It it mm -hmm. yeah, it'd have to be on this side for this to if this to match, especially with our <laughs> sphinx right here. You'd expect the water to literally be about here. I mean, 
it's possible because we know that the the pyramids are on this mantle. Look, mm -hmm. it's the Giza Plateau. Yeah, it's the high. Yeah, exactly. Above. So, the uh, this I suppose hypothetically could have been flooded with water. Where are we looking on that old? Um... You can you can see in that location, but it definitely definitely doesn't match what we're seeing in this first image. We look very pointy. Too many of them. Some of them with entrances. Um, colossal head and sphinx not really matching so on to our next image now french Ger french and german book or the original one uh we went through it on one of my videos and mm -hmm. in the bottom left and bottom right you had a german and a french mm -hmm. description for, yeah, yeah. for essentially the same thing and we can see from this one that they're again they're too tall way too tall um as mm -hmm. in in relation to their uh their width and mm -hmm. actually too tall literally because at the bottom we can see that it says that the base is 682 feet so we've got 624 feet high and 682 feet wide now obviously they did have different feet measurements at different points in history but i don't mm. think they differed that much because today the, the pyramid of giza which is the biggest and this is you know um this one is um mm -hmm. the, the biggest that it's talking about that's supposed to be i think 452 feet high yeah, even considering, um, you know, your, your British, French, Italian inches and feet, whatnot, and, you know, a foot would vary at max between an inch or two, give or take, probably an inch, give or take. But even, yeah, accounting for that, it doesn't measure up. Five, yeah, so it says at the bottom, made up of five stones, and it's 16 feet long. So that's five stones, 16 feet long. Mm -hmm. We know for a fact that the pyramid at the top is way more than just five stones. There's absolutely loads. I think um, here's an image that I'll bring up if I can get a decent view of it. So we can see on this image that we've got many stones. So there's way more than five. At least six. And this is supposed to be <laughs> so it's supposed to be sixteen on each, sixteen feet each side, and made up of only five large stones. So if that wasn't true, why would he say it? You know, that just seems like a really weird thing to lie about. Like, uh, yeah. unless they're so, counting the external limestone bigger blocks, the casing before they've been moved away. Yeah, before they got taken. Ah, so we could be looking. Yeah, that's a very good point. Actually, we could be talking about it before the casing has been removed. In which mm -hmm. case, that would probably throw a bit of a spanner in the official narrative because I think the official narrative says the casings were removed. You know, over over mm -hmm. thousands of years. And, and this would actually insinuate that the casing has been removed at least in the past few hundred years, you know, a lot yeah. sooner. A lot um, of these things we're looking at, it's like there's a complete difference in Egypt between the 1700s and now, like, short span of time, they just destroyed it, changed it. This, this image just shows us um, a view of the pyramids that we find in the Nubias, Nubian mm -hmm. region, sorry. These are the Sudanese, I believe. Sudanese pyramids, and you can see how they are way more like these tall, mm. narrow ones that we saw in our image before, and possibly even more like this. Although the, the difference is with these ones, they don't have any form of entrance, whereas these do. They always have these temples. These temples on the front, the temple entrances, very similar architecturally to the kind of things you find at the Edfu temple in Luxor, all the temples in Egypt. Mm -hmm. They seem to have a very similar design. Um, this is our temple of Edfu, and you can see this officially never connected to a pyramid. But if you look behind mm -hmm. it, there is a giant section where a pyramid yeah. would very nicely fit. And we've talked before about there being mentions of pyramids being in Luxor. Mm -hmm. I've got a video on my channel about lost pyramids yeah, of Luxor where we talked about connected. this. Yeah, 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 because yeah, it's very similar, isn't it? Very similar yeah. design architecturally to what we see on the front. Yeah, there are differences, so yeah. they might not be the same. Um, but we see the changes as well. This one down here has an arched entrance like we mm. just saw on that other image. And it also appears to be a step it's, pyramid, yeah. whereas this one isn't. And it's on a pedestal, just like the one, you know, you, you see this square pedestal mm. here or right rectangular enough. pedestal at the bottom. So again, and look at the absolute state these things are in. You know, and then obviously this is um, this is Giza at the bottom that they've edited over, so you can see the difference between Giza and these. These are uh, completely different, much more narrow, and I think that they match that original first image that we saw. 
So is it possible that all the pyramids that were originally there were actually these Nubian pyramids and that they've been destroyed and then maybe um, maybe all that's left is Giza? Mm-hmm. Well, what's the official story on the Nubian pyramid era? What time period was that? Well, it's, um, I believe they're, well, they're Kush Kingdom, um, or just prior to Kush Kingdom, because it's essentially Egyptians are in control, the Nubians are in control, and then mm-hmm. Egyptians are in control again, and then the Greeks show up. Right, you are, yeah, Kushites. Approximately 780 BC through to 350 well, yeah. AD. Yeah, so those guys, it's the ones... The Meroitic, before... Mero. Yeah, Mero, uh, Temple of Mero, or Pyramid of Mero. Uh-huh. That's, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. That's the All right, I know where we are now, yeah. Yeah. So okay, this is so, very um, this is very mixed with Egypt, very mixed. Yeah, with it is. Well, of course, uh, yeah, yeah, and well, one of the regions we talked about being like Sithka, but um, so this image here again is supposed to be uh, it's supposed to be Giza, like I say, it's the pyramids of Egypt. It talks about one being six hundred twenty four feet high. So mm-hmm. whatever way you look at it, it's definitely a big pyramid, and we see that there are actually two sphinxes. One of them is the Egyptian style with the mm-hmm. headdress, the even though Fair it's enough. male. It does still appear to have uh, giant tits. If you, if you could just see there, I'll. Uh, yeah, let me see. Look at that. So you, well, you can see both of them. Both of them are either homogenous or they've basically both females. So this headdress, whatever way you want to see it, either somebody in history has it could seen just be the, drawn uh, in less detail, you know, as a way to get away with it being in the background a bit more. You know, what do you mean? Little... Oh, like a clever little artistic trick when you're drawing a big picture. You know, um, things in the background, you just draw them in less detail. Yeah, it could um, also be the same as the, the Greek one in front. but just Well, yeah, but we're, we're missing wings. It could be the same with the wings gone, but we can see, yeah, like you say, that could be lower quality, but it definitely doesn't have wings the same as this one. Mm-hmm. This one is portrayed as having the wings. The f- yeah, it could be a case of a lower quality one. No, but it it's evidently just one headdress on top and then it would have been very easy for them to change the the lining on this i was watching a video recently of an artist who draws complex uh cityscapes and then he was talking about one of his tricks when you want to draw a detailed picture you're not actually drawing detail in the background you're just giving the impression of it or just being a bit more lazy I mean... yeah yeah, I but it's see. not really the background. Right at the front next to the other one. And this one as well gives us another view true, of, true. True. of this. Right, yeah. Now, what's um, what's yeah, mental is there? Not... I do remember the in the French and the German versions of this, um, they talk about this being the Sphinx as it is today or when the image was drawn. And mm-hmm. this, and they don't specify which, they just put uh, a letter next to both. <laughs> and they say, and this is the Sphinx in all its glory. So they're trying to insinuate, like, this is what it looked like back in the day, thousands of years ago, even though we have no idea. And this is what it looks like today. That's what they're trying to say. But to me, that doesn't make sense because this Colossus head, it's on its own pedestal. It has no back attached to it whatsoever. It looks like mm-hmm. it's, it's the shoulders. Shoulders on a pedestal. Yeah, it just doesn't at all look like it's... In fact, you can even see that it's got completely different hair. Like, it doesn't look mm-hmm. like it's... Again, it could be a detail thing, but that, to me, looks like short, short hair, hair, possibly, there. Mm-hmm. Just short hair here. That's not... that. I thought that was longer hair, but that's part of the background. Um, I can zoom in a bit more. Have a look at that. So you can see that isn't hair there. Mm-hmm. That definitely is some kind of hair or hat. And this that's looks, awesome. to me quite female but there isn't there isn't a bust or anything so you don't know could be a dude but mm-hmm. i think it's quite clear that it's not um there's not one of these oh, to me anyway because we see we see more colossus heads everywhere mm-hmm. and, and it's not there today so these these guys are obviously claiming but how many do we count one two three four five six seven eight can in eight pyramids mm-hmm. and they all seem to look very similar height and which doesn't match at all with what we know they're all missing their capstones but mm-hmm. you know this these look very uniform right they're built all by the same people and you know a simple jump to um to google earth gives us oh, jesus that, that that doesn't look healthy does it <laughs> oh no the tops have come off <laughs> the tops put, fell off put the back on 
Why are they showing what, us what's what, what have I done? What have I done? <laughs> I've broken Zoom, Egypt. Zoom in on these pyramids right now. That's interesting. It's because the uh, the 3D terrain overlay somehow. Yeah. Okay, just look at it from above. You never know. But yeah. Never know. yeah, yeah, literally. So, you know, it's one, two, three, <laughs> four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So, I mean, it could be the right amount, but these are in a uniform shape. And I feel like for an artist, it's very simple to draw. But you could make the argument that the person who drew it, well, it never actually went. A lot of the times, people seem to have drawn things based on description alone. You know, so they read like a book by Pliny the Elder and then go and draw mm. that scene and that gets passed down. Mm. Although I don't I don't get why it would have been so difficult because in, in the old days, I swear everyone and their mothers is going to Jerusalem every weekend. Um, <laughs> so I don't I don't understand why it would have been so hard for any of these artists to actually visit Egypt themselves and go, oh, no, it doesn't look anything like that. It looks like this. Especially when uh, Egypt was, you know, such a Christian country, the Romans, the, the Greeks took over. Why, why is there not more imagery of uh, of this stuff? But yeah, and art isn't exactly the most lucrative uh, business. You got to have someone funding you, or you got to be wealthy yourself. Our you next image here. Cool. I know this bit here says the Barbara or the Barbarus, as the translation will tell you. Whoa, Barbarus pyramids uh, silence the wonders of Memphis. On this one here, barbarous, see see barbarous see pyramid, uh, Barbara Pyramidim, yeah. <laughs> Cilia Mira, Kula Memphis. So that's the great Memphis, yeah. yeah so they, the silence Barbarous the Pyramid great. silence the yeah. miraculous miracles of Memphis. Mm -hmm. That's it, yeah. Or is it saying the Barbarous Pyramids are the silent miracles of Memphis? Or if my conversation well, served me right, I think that sounds right. That they they are in the act of silencing. Yeah, as it as in I'm, I'm interpreting is it they are greater than the great. Yeah, yeah, that's the, yeah. yeah, that's, that's the way I the great ones. Yeah, that's what I decoded it as being as well. But obviously, on the map, we can see Memphis in the background, and we can also see Heliopolis, which would imply that these pyramids were uh, at least near that area, because that's exactly where Memphis and Heliopolis are. You know, you can see the Nile. It. Mm -hmm. So I'm I'm not really sure. We also see the Barbara pyramids are usually reserved for the ones further down south. But by having the Nile and Memphis there, you'd think it was implying that these are the actual pyramids. Mm -hmm. We do see as well That's Crypto good. Subterranea, <laughs> which there are a lot of crypts around there. And we can mm -hmm. also tell that whoever drew this clearly had no clue of what was going on at the bottom because what the hell are these? Interesting entranceways. Very basic. But are they trying to imply that this, perhaps, is what the Colossus looks like that we saw? Because it's got the short hair. And it was a bust, wasn't it? It was a bust of a shoulder. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. The short hair. Mm. What's he on? Short oh, he's on some bricks. He's on, some, he's on like... Yeah, a... he's, he's on bricks, which are almost like pedestal. I didn't notice that. I thought it was like superimposed almost, like a modern yeah, movie poster. Like so what, what pictures are these again? Go on. The Barbarous Pyramids, they're the ones of Barbara. Well, yeah, they're the Nubian ones. Where's Memphis? Because could it be one of those things like Aswan where they've moved it? This is this is Memphis. The pyramids are there. Mm. So there's there's the ruins of Memphis. Pyramids are there. Giza's here. Heliopolis is on the other side. Yeah, and the Nile went round. So right. Memphis down so here. Nile, Heliopolis, uh, Heliopolis on the left. So weirdly... I know it's it's like a flipped image as well, I guess, because on this one we've got Heliopolis is on the right and Memphis is on the left. Wait, Barbary Pyramids, is this on the other side of the Nile? Is it possible it's on the other side of the Nile? But again, maybe the geography isn't something you want to trust too much because the Nile does curve around, so maybe Heliopolis was here, maybe Memphis is on this side, Heliopolis is on this side, and Pyramids around here somewhere. Yeah, it's a confusing one. It's a very confusing one. Definitely, but like I say, I think definitely, I think Athanasius Kircher was basing things off descriptions. I don't think he personally went to uh, to Egypt at any point. But imagine if you did after you'd written one of these books, though. Like, imagine if you went after writing this book and you're like, "Fuck, I got this completely wrong." <laughs> right. So that's that's the first Kircher. This one apparently is another Kircher, but I'm not 100 percent sure if it is. It does look like the same art. Um. And it provides us with a view that was really similar to our other image. 
What's going on at the bottom of the picture there? This is part of the crypt. Oh, oh, oh I see. Yeah. Uh, I so they're know. actually not. They're not. Yeah. They're. they're and notice something not about the size it's of this coffin. Anyone want to talk about the size of this tomb? <laughs> I want to mention that. Look at the size okay. of that yeah. bad boy. Could this be our downside? Well, this is it. How, the I, I can't cite you a source on this, but I've been looking for mm -hmm. it, so I will get back to you on this one. But I remember hearing that there was stories to do with Enki and all that lot, the Sumerians and the whole ancient alien stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it might have been on ancient alien episodes. I don't know how much credence you want to give to it, but <laughs> apparently, according to these actual old stories, there were these regeneration chambers underneath the pyramids mm. in catacomb networks where these old gods would essentially like rest for hundreds of years when their bodies died or some shit i'm not saying that's what it is but it feels mm. very reminiscent because you can see what appears to be a normal size coffin here i would think mm, that looks like a normal size tomb at least stone tomb especially and then this on the people well yeah and then go to the left this one we're talking if that if that's a person lay flat, they've got to be about how tall? Like well, six, uh, well, yeah, it's very hard. Yeah, very hard to tell actually. Six, twelve, eighteen, twenty, up to twenty-four foot, maybe. Yeah, big person. It's a very big person. The kind of person you probably need if you wanted to construct very big things. But we won't go too into the giant stuff because. Mm -hmm. It's just there's just not enough evidence. I love the theory, I love the idea, and it keeps popping up this idea of bigger people coming out through history. But unfortunately, until you actually find tangible evidence of a giant, you're gonna just sound like an idiot talking about it. I'm not saying I don't believe, I'm not saying I do. No, I kind of do that, believe uh, we're throwing around that idea the other week or the day or week, why don't we about uh other species of humans possibly? existing all the way until like just a few hundred or thousand years ago at least has some letters as well that i don't have the text for which would give us so you can see that mm. it, it does actually so we'll have to find that lots of very tall pointy pyramids um back ones bricks stepped bricks almost at least on one of them uh, yeah this one here this this definitely oh, yeah, yeah. Re resembles the same steps that we saw in that image i brought up is it this one have i still got it up no, I don't think it is. I'll get rid of the Sphinx. Um, the one that we saw before, you know, I was showing you the Nubian pyramids and there was one mm -hmm. just like that in the background. Mm. Yeah. And then, but then these ones up close, they look more like the monoliths, like the uh, closer ones with hieroglyphics. They look more like your uh, obelisks. obelisks. Yes, yeah. 100%. Well, which is what but I've been so, saying about so um, this this base. Yeah, obelisk. this base to me almost resembles like, yeah, the obelisk style build. But yeah, you're right. The, the obelisks that we see are usually more rectangular. Mm. These as well, some of them seem to have decorative cornerstones going up as mm -hmm. well. And mm. the indication is that people have climbed to the top. <laughs> I think we do see some of the uh, decorative cornerstones with some of the remaining pyramids. I think, but again, they are extremely pointy. We are seeing, and this down here, this one's interesting as well, the base on this one. Look at that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that looks almost like the, uh, in the other image, it looked like one was being covered by a tarp or something, like a big piece of cloth. And up Which there in the middle it? by the big head. Oh, yeah. But maybe that's the uh, base that we're seeing. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's a very good point. So, the, yeah, part, uh, these look like they are showing very... But, I mean, it is a bit different, isn't it? Yeah. It does feel like it's yeah. covered by a tarp, doesn't it? I love that. But it, but it could be, you know, just plain and then the scrawlings are like attempts. This one is interesting as well because it mm. looks almost like it's reflecting the sand that they're on. <laughs> so I'm, I'm wondering if these were covered in black to provide a reflection because we know for a fact if I get up my uh, I'll get up the other picture one sec, right here we go yeah, was, there you go yeah, black one, yeah. so this is from the black pyramid I'll show you the black pyramid today uh, but <laughs> what if the those pyramids are covered in that black stone? 
Yeah, what is this? Some sort of granite marble? Or obviously it could be the white, the typical white that we're told about. I've got more pictures of the um, the Black Pyramid, but this is what remains of the Black Pyramid today. So this is the pyramid today that this capstone came from. Yeah, but the, the indication... It's standing pretty strong. Nice. Yeah, well, as we know, the internal structure is most likely to be a mess, isn't it? It's not the beauty that we're we're imagining. You can see what appears to be like the, the actual blocks, you know. So here it looks like mm, it's yeah. natural. So yeah, this capstone would actually be. I'll get a full screen view of that as well. This capstone would actually be on top of that pyramid that we just saw. Maybe there's an image. Oh, there's a close up there of some of the hieroglyphs on the side, big crack going down the left. So this thing, mm -hmm. oh, and there's all the hieroglyphs. So technically, mm -hmm. if you want, if anyone has uh, camoraglyphics, you could try and decode that into Welsh, see what it says. Imagine that on top of this pyramid. So have you found what you're looking for or should I just carry on? Um, I found a couple. Um, yeah, actually, yeah, yeah, I found the perfect one. So just a little artist's impression. You know, if that whole thing was the same mm -hmm. stone, this is what we'd be looking at with the capstone. Ca a capstone down. being that <laughs> would have been fucking <laughs> awesome to see, wouldn't it? And that's all that's left of it. <laughs> would have been awesome. So obviously we're told that the pyramid at Giza white of it in limestone, white in limestone. In fact, yeah, what they what they would say as well is that the top was apparently made of gold and mm -hmm. it would shine like this. So I'll get up an image of this. They angled it so it would reflect the sun at the hottest part of the day into the uh, poorest suburbs yes and apparently according to the old sources the the white would reflect all the areas of around it so it'd reflect all the desert mm -hmm. so if you were looking from a distance at the um at the pyramid mm -hmm. the white would at the base would reflect all the sand and from the top you'd get the reflection of the blue sky and then the gold top would just shine so it would appear as if the gold cap was just floating on its own because of the reflection, according to the old sources. Mm -hmm. That's how cool. it appeared that this, yeah, that this thing is just floating. And then, you know, is that because this is a white pyramid and this is the black pyramid? We know that there was a red pyramid. So was that maybe built with red sandstone? This is um right. Really this is what here. I was talking about before, that it, you know how it gets listed as the Elephantine pyramid? It's not. Yeah, we've got the internal structure here, which on the Black Pyramid is completely, well, it's still standing, but it's much more uh, destroyed. Um, it's much more crumbled. Whereas on so the you, end, Oh, wait, is, is this suggested as just being the internal structure? If you look at that, I mean, it's a, it's a different shape, but this one is also another one which shows with right. the stepped pyramids that you've got an internal okay. structure. I think this is offset for some reason. Um, right. But yeah, this is the thing we see with the stepped pyramids in particular, I found. I, I don't know if you say that. So, you, right. So, well, my opinion on that would be that if the outside had been destroyed, why would the inside be left so uniformly rectangle? Different stone. I mean, if it's sandstone on the outside, it would crumble away and form sand like well, we see. Yeah, possibly, but like I mean. There. But whatever this I, I, I felt is. like that. I, I feel like that is just the actual pyramid itself, and it's a narrow pyramid. Oh, right. Yeah. That's to me, that's what it looks like. We've just been looking at these narrow maybe. pyramids. Oh, and maybe they just covered up the narrow pyramids to make them wider. And they chopped yeah, off the Yeah, yeah, for real. And they're like, no, there were never any tall pyramids. These are the real pyramids. Right, exactly. Because we're going to get to this point mm -hmm. that we've got a reference to a 1400 foot tall pyramid that we'll talk mm -hmm. about. It's the only reference I've ever found. But the fact that it's referenced, yeah. and it's by, you know, a reputable dude. It's not like some dude on the street was going, I saw a 1,400-foot pyramid once, you know? <laughs> um, it's, it's actually a, a Henry Chatelain, you know, he writes entire histories. He, he wrote an entire world history book, and his section on Egypt obviously includes, includes these references to a 1,400-foot tall pyramid. So, mm -hmm. yeah, you'd think. Mm, I'm wondering, yeah. again, that if maybe they're more obelisk-like. Yeah, you know, they just kept stepping up and maybe yeah well because yeah step pyramids are definitely bricks, different so. yeah the step pyramids definitely different we see the step it's quite obvious but that 
to me, that isn't a step pyramid. Yeah, you'd have to have the outside, but like you said, different stone. Why why would the outside stone crumble and turn to essentially dust and sand whilst the inside stone mm. remains without purposely doing that? And I think looking at the Black Pyramid shows that mm. that doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's say the Black Pyramid again. You know, take it. If we go to the image, the destroyed image of the Black Pyramid, I mean, th this one. Yeah, completely. We don't, yeah. we don't know how. We don't it's know still how like the internal structure is obviously harder. But it but again, it reminds me of this. It reminds me of these these t mm -hmm. much thinner, t taller ones moving up. Um, just like that is exactly what I thought when I saw the the Medum pyramid originally. I'll try. And find I mean, it's possible. It's either way. I wouldn't like to suggest, but. I'll bring up more photos just from Google so we can have a look and see what we think. Yep, yep. There we are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, okay. Oh, right. that one so, five across at the top is a perfect example of what was. Yes, right. So this this is what it's oh, suggesting it is. So we've got the internal, then we've got the stepped, and then we've got the outer casing. That's what this would suggest, yeah. 3D model here of ancient the of the pyramid. To me, that feels too uniform to just be the sensor. Mm-hmm. Like this it, is the I mean, pyramid. Yeah, like look at this. It just oh. why why is why is the rest falling to pieces? I mean, you can see out outer stones here, but they could have easily fallen from it and have just built a rubble pile around the base that mm -hmm. have all fallen from up here. People going up to look, so it's massive. Look at wow. the size of it. That is huge. Yeah. Look, look at that. Let's get that photo up. That's a good yeah, photo. The other one didn't really do it justice. Look, yeah, wow. Yeah, I think this this genuinely, I'm not saying it is what it is, but I think there mm -hmm. is a good possibility that this thing was really tall, more like an obelisk. Mm -hmm. We've got a lot of pyramids and a lot of time throughout history for a lot of people to do a lot of different things. <laughs> exactly. It's a lot of people. And to think, a lot of people, a lot, a lot of time. Of time. <laughs> people. They call them pyramid destroyers. But oh yeah, um, interestingly, you know where there is the only now black pyramid in the world? LA. Uh, no, no, very no, close. No, no. Las Wait, Vegas. I, 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 yes, yeah. the Luxor <laughs> Pyramid, Las Vegas. There we go. So this is the, the black pyramid in LA. <laughs> I mean, so you got me there. This is the black pyramid in Las Vegas. And in front, you can see they've got a nice tall white obelisk and a sphinx. So this is a casino. And oh, it's yeah. obviously it's, it's specifically called the Luxor Casino, mm -hmm. um, and that that's important because Luxor is one of these places that was denied ever having a pyramid, even though I've said it bloody does. So it's almost <laughs> like they're laughing at us, like we know, you know, but we'll never admit it. You know what? There are a surprising lack of imagery of the other pyramids. <laughs> Um, open image in new tab. Is that work? right? Okay, so here we go. This is a good view of the Black Pyramid today, Ariel. There we go. Yeah, that's really interesting seeing that stone color, isn't it? I think this might be edited because uh, I know it is darker, darker, but yeah, I, I have seen some floating about on the internet have, have definitely been edited to be even darker. I saw someone claiming yeah, well, it was melted down by energy weapons, which. You know, oh I'm yeah, yeah, no. Theory, but I don't believe it in this case. <laughs> no, you're right. I think this this think image we... here, um, it's like they're trying to make it. Yeah, I I agree. They're trying to make it yeah, look darker. It's... But I think one thing we can't argue with though is the mm. the darkness of the stone, the capstone. Mm, not at all. Yeah, it's... can't you know can't argue with that. Um, and yeah, like I said before, it's very interesting. You can see that. Look at the. That's stonemanship, that, isn't it? That's so... That really yeah. is something. Look at the wings. Right. Look at the wings. My tattoo wings aren't even that crisp. Like ancient civilization, when it made this a couple thousand, well, 3,000 years ago or something. So, yeah, wow. That, it's just amazing, though, isn't it? Look at the size mm. of that. This is just the middle structure that we see. And then when you zoom out to the area one and do actually see the size of it, you can see all those people are standing on that huge pile of rubble, which is huge. I've so got I, the aerial one. Um, I will have a look. What for Midem? Um, uh, Black Pyramid aerial. I think you mean the Midem one, don't you, with the other one? No, no, the Black Pyramid, the aerial one that you were just showing. 
Right, so have a look at this aerial image. We saw how big the people were compared. Oh, I see. Yeah, I see what you're talking about. I was mixing it up. There, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, but yeah, yeah it's so huge. And that, that so yeah, you're, you're, huge, you're trying it? to suggest that this is the outer the outer yeah. thing going well, up from this corner up to a normal a normal shaped pyramid and that's what the official narrative suggests mm -hmm. yeah and i can yeah, yeah I, could, I could see it but i just don't i don't understand no, why I'm this not... is so uniformly no what okay. i was saying and that was that just to show the scale of how big this really oh. is oh like, yeah exactly not only those is tiny people the tiny people compared to this center bit and then the tiny people are standing on the huge pile of rubble. Yeah, tiny people are standing around here, and that's that's what I'm saying. So, is it? Does this continue down? And in fact, this maybe is a step pyramid going up, and then maybe this is a tall obelisk, or is it the interior? And this is, but I mean, how have they got to such levels of destruction? A people always say, "Oh, well." Well, they say over the years, everyone in the local area stole the bricks, but you mm. always see them in the middle of a desert. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, there's buildings yeah. in the background, but it's not like there's buildings all nearby. Who who are the people that are like off 40 miles away going, you know, oh, you're going to watch the pyramids, steal some stones, come back. Where, come back where are all the houses built of pyramid stones? <laughs> Genuine well, yeah, question. Exactly. Oh, I don't yeah, know. We, don't, we don't find them. We don't. And you like, say, for Giza, the, the exact thing is that the casing stones were literally stolen to build other things. But the, the actual houses yeah. are really not that close to Giza, and it'd be a bit of a mission to walk up and steal. So here's, stones. here's something I suspect. I suspect that this centre part was the original tall pyramid, and then some later civilization, later dynasty, later rulers came in, knocked the top off that, or whatever, destroyed that, and then encased this centre pyramid in, a, made it a wider one, made it a stepped pyramid that was just shorter. And then a later civilization comes along and then take destroys some of that and then rebuilds over the top an even an even more wider uh you know pyramid like Giza. What a Giza. What a Giza. Diamond but Giza. yeah, so I'm I'm thinking um now I'm gonna look zoom in on this. This is our <laughs> first document from Henry Chatelain. I'm not going to actually read this one because I don't think there's anything in this actual page that we need to go over. This is the description of the Nile one. Um, sorry, no, this is a description of the pyramids one. So, I mean, there is good information in here, but um, I'm going to read it over myself before because I don't want to go through the whole thing. But we will look at these images. So you can see here that there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, the varying height depicted. Um, we saw our sphinx. This is the representation of the three biggest or the three main pyramids. So these are the three main pyramids of Giza. Mm -hmm. Presumably this guy hasn't actually seen them himself. That's it's again awesome. what it's suggested. But he's drawn them narrow again. What is it about people drawing narrow pyramids? Like, did nobody ever visit Egypt? Could nobody ever say, oh, by the way, mate, you know they're not like that. They're like way more, <laughs> way wider and smaller. <laughs> but no, just nobody apparently listened to that shit. No one, no one from Egypt, even though Egyptians were like everywhere in Europe during Roman times, apparently none of them went, oh, by the way, that's not what the pyramids look like. Even though, you know, St. Morris is an actual Egyptian saint of uh of coburg or gotha coburg and he's their oh, yeah. patron saint is on yeah and, and he didn't even mention oh by the way guys you're drawing these pyramids all wrong mm. but yeah again uh this one says the is this the pyramid you can climb i think it is <laughs> yeah yeah the pyramid you can climb and this one is the pyramid you can enter yeah, this is the pyramid you can enter. Notice how it, the entrance is is listed it seems to be on the bottom, but we know the entrance to the second pyramid is actually like halfway up, I believe. So this is the description of the Nile, and it says the Nile being the greatest river of Africa and the most famous of all this continent, one will be very glad to see here in the description of its course from Cairo to the cataracts, such as was described to the King of France, Louis the Fourteenth, by a traveller who drew it on the site. 
So this information has been provided to King, the King of France, Louis XIV, by a traveller. The authors do not agree on the source of this famous river, which is not yet well known. Some place it in the mountains of the moon at 12 degrees from the southern latitude, or the snow of these mountains coming to melt, making several streams, which emerge from two great lakes distance from each other, about 80 miles. So it's saying that they're not sure where it comes from, whether it's the mountains of the moon and uh, the snow on these mountains melting to make loads of streams that obviously form to make two great lakes. But these great lakes are distant from each other by 80 miles. And their waters having each made a channel rejoin in Ethiopia, where they form only one, which after having flowed in a large expanse of the country, separates again and forms the island of Moreau, where these two branches of the Nile join in a single river, which after having meandered well comes to a high mountain through which it passes with violence, and this precipitates then in Egypt by a furious cascade. So this is very interesting information because Moreau, as far as I was concerned, wasn't an island the last I checked, but perhaps it is now. Do you know much about Moreau? Um, hello. Um, I don't know too much. Uh, I think I've been, I've had a good look at it on the maps and then um, the island is, wait, the island of Moreau, is that the one south of Aswan? No, the uh, the island of Moreau is where these Nubian pyramids are. But there is no island of Moreau. It's a desert. Mm, but there was. Yes. <laughs> well, th this is what it's apparently saying. That the, oh, it's yes, saying that the... Myself. Yeah, Nubia. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So this is calling it the islands of... Well, the island, sorry, of Moreau. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, if we look at the area now, we know they've dammed up parts. They've... Completely well, yeah, I was going to say, I, it, it definitely it definitely didn't form into two rivers that went around Moreau the last I checked. No, but, right now there is no island. So, Moreau, let's see if we can find what was possibly called the island. Right, okay. Yeah. This is at the top end. Ain't no oh, island yeah. here. Um, wait. If you look this, at where that old are river... They, are they referring to this? Yeah, are they referring to this? Yeah, that is a very dried up, very dead... Maybe it's in use, but you know, seasonal. But there it is, right so, there. Oh, wait, so is, is this is wait, is this possible? That can't be because that looks like, yeah, that looks if like mountains compare, to me, though. Oh, yeah, as so one's up there, the Aswan. right? So, Island. yeah, this is why this is why it's interesting because looking at the old maps, we're gonna see this mm -hmm. same this shape error. Uh, so this is one stream, this is definitely is one. One Nile coming like this all the way down up here. It has something joining there, but Moreau being here, it tells us that mm -hmm. after having each made a channel, they rejoin in Ethiopia, where they form only one, which after having flowed in a large expanse of the country, separates again and forms the island of Moreau. Mm -hmm. So it's saying as the Nile travels through Ethiopia, I'm going to get our borders on for us. Um, well, present day Ethiopia is different to Ethiopia. True. Yeah. Yeah. Very different. Um, I think, in fact, Ethiopian um, it was empire, stretched the Ethiopians took over Egypt for a bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, oh, yeah. That history of the world book I was reading actually refers to some of the. Ethiopian. Yeah. There was, there was an, e yeah, there was an Ethiopian. Ethiopian Chris. I think it might have been Christian, but I could be completely wrong mm -hmm. about that. But there was an Ethiopian um, empire in Egypt for a bit. So maybe South Sudan was considered Ethiopia then. I think Sudan, South Sudan, most of that, apart from the far east, was considered... Uh, well, the word I read, I'm not going to read, but <laughs> I'm not going to say. Uh, it was part of like a kingdom, a, a grouping of kingdoms which Nubia was part of, and Chad was right. part of Niger. Uh, okay. they, stretching up to Mali, with that being on the west, are completely different. So yeah, it's, so it does, but it suggests anyway that the, the Nile, at some point in after Ethiopia, forms mm -hmm. into two rivers that then merge again, which creates the, oh, uh, the, the island the of the mountains. Rome. There we go, follow it around yeah. towards the border of Ethiopia. And then maybe it follows the border of Ethiopia back down. 
it's yeah, possibly maybe it goes down here and rejoins yeah, it's, somewhere. It's here, man, but I mean, this the, the Nile here definitely goes into South Sudan, doesn't it? Well, it comes from mm -hmm. South Sudan. Looks like it's coming from over here. Um, mm -hmm. and curves back down. Yeah, yeah. It goes. looks like it looks like around Juba possibly. And then we do we've got you know big lakes over here, and it talked about two giant lakes being eighty miles from one another. And their waters are where it comes from. So it's possible it's talking about these two lakes here, maybe, in, in Uganda. Um, we've got one over here called Lake Victoria. Another over here, Lake Albert. Lake Victoria. Yeah, Lake Victoria is one is that, of the That's where it, the, the source, source of the Nile. Right, that makes sense then. So, yeah, they're definitely talking about this. 80 miles away, these, these are probably probably about 80 miles yeah, we got, measure. Measure. More, yeah. We got Lake Tana on the Blue Nile, which is in Ethiopia. Okay, now that's a bit more than 80 miles, but uh, it's 150 miles to the nearest uh, lake from Victoria ish, give or take, about 120. Oh, um, but yeah, you can you can see the sources of these things. Oh, didn't want me to do that. Yeah, you see the source of these things, and that fits. So we'll carry on to what it was saying anyway. Because we'll get to the interesting bit. So it says the second source is distant from the first by about a stone's throw, and there is no bottom. Natural so, spring. If it goes deep into the ground, yeah. We notice that all the surrounding earth is shaking, which makes it look like it's all filled with water. The field where these springs are is very difficult to access from all sides, except on the north side where it can be approached more easily. The middle resembles a lake, the edge of which extends out as if by the blow of a slingshot. Below the mountain, at the distance of about a mile, one sees coming out of the bowels of the earth in the bottom of a deep valley, a bouillon slash broth. Sorry, not bouillon, a bouillon, bouillon, gold bouillon. Um, a bouillon slash broth, uh, which forms a river and which joins the Nile soon after. We believe that it has the same source as this river and that it flows for some time underground and only shows itself in this place. So there is some stuff about different lakes. So yeah, I was looking at the different lakes on Google Maps. We've got Lake Albert, which is, it almost looks like one source, but then feeding into Lake Albert comes a river from Lake Kyoga, which is very, there's got to be a dam there, right? I, I think it's possible that we're looking at some kind of result of a change in the water flow, you know? Mm -hmm, absolutely. Because... Um, yeah, well, we'll get more onto that. But here, this is quite interesting because I will read this bit. In the middle of the kingdom of Gojam, which is 12 de uh, degrees from the south latitude, in the province of Saka Halo, spelled S-A-K-A-H-A-L-O. So I wanted to bring that up because it had the Saka in the name, because obviously that's a very Scythian-related tribe, the Saka Halo, Saka Halo. Mm -hmm. And that's quite your area, isn't it? Um, yeah, the Saka of Iran, but then also we've got them known as the Sa uh, the people who became the Saxons in Germany. Uh, but yeah, also lo lots of references with Nubian, um, Nubian Egyptians and the Sakas there. So especially when we get to Greek, you know, Greek the Greek the Greco Scythian Greco Bactrian Empire, that looks like Colbrun almost it looks like runes as well or just shapes um what is that 72, 72 feet, feet high with the pedestal 72 feet high <laughs> yeah that's a colossus mate wait wait the hort is that high? is that high yeah anyway um <laughs> the Nile cataracts. I'm just going to read this small bit and then we'll move on to these figures because the figures are important. Um, so the Nile cataracts. To go see these famous waterfalls, one is usually accompanied by a good escort to avoid the insults of the Arabs who are great thieves. Wow. We pass the town of Aswana, after which we arrive at the place where the Nile fall falls noisily. I can't fucking speak. Foils noisily, um, <laughs> after which we arrive at the place where the Nile falls noisily in several places from a mountain more than 200 feet high. The barbarians have the boldness to descend there with rafts, and one, see, and one sees who rush thus at the same time as these frightful cascades. 
So there must, I think there's been a, a, an issue with the translation there because that doesn't really make sense. But um, yeah, they're saying that the barbarians descend a 200 foot high waterfall in their rafts. The only place where you could cross is apparently a remarkable layer of water 30 feet wide, which forms a kind of archway under which one can pass without getting wet. What makes one believe that once one took this pleasure is that one still sees their kind of platform where there are several niches for resting and several openings which lead to underground places. But we can't go there now because the water that passes through several places prevents access. So it seems there's like a tunnel system embedded in this waterfall, mm -hmm. which is yeah. really interesting. But the waterfall is around the ancient quarries. And it makes sense if they were using water as part of their production methods that they built their mm -hmm. quarry in a waterfall. That's like the perfect place. You've got water flowing constantly to do whatever you need. Yeah, where was so, the cataract? Just south of Aswan. So we've got the high dam, yeah. which makes Lake Aswan now. Lake Nasser, between even. The so. first, yeah, between the first cataracts and the second cataracts is the kingdom known as Nubia. So that's your Nubian kingdom between the first two cataracts. Uh huh. Which is it's actually interesting because I'm pretty certain Moreau is way, way around the corner of the first two uh, cataracts. So it must have controlled different points at different play at times. But um, he just talks a bit more about the Nile cataracts. And then we move on to the figures, which is the most important bit. So the first figure here, can you see this image? Look at that. Mm hmm. So we, we can see small houses and then these pillars, all these pillars. And yeah, and what this says, to go to the cataracts and the falls of the Nile, we pass by a small fortress of the Turks called Nasa. Turks. Not... Turks meaning yes, the Turks. Turkic, Turkic peoples. Because that was the yeah, uh, yeah that was our with target. with with our you know original C yeah. yeah. So look, NASA spelled like that by the way, or sometimes it has an R at the end, so NASA. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, we pass by a small fortress of the Turks called NASA, from where we begin to hear its noise and to see the mountains from which it falls. So when you get to NASA, you can mm -hmm. see the waterfalls, the cataracts, and you can see the, the the walls coming over. The walls of this fortress are only bricks baked in the sun. It is built on a small height and has only one door to enter it. About a quarter of a league from the fortress is a place uh, is a place full of tombs made of white marble-like stone with inscriptions of quite an unknown character. Ooh, because we, we will talk about this at some point. Mm -hmm. The unknown characters discovered deep within the Giza pyramid that aren't hieroglyphs. Oh, They're on yeah. an inner layer. Yeah, the, they're on an inner layer of the pyramid that was inaccessible. It's actually in the tunnel that most people uh, who know about the pyramids will have possibly heard about those sections where they had to send a tiny robot in, and then mm -hmm. they sent in a tiny robot with a drill, and then they sent in a tiny robot with a fucking optical camera. <laughs> yeah, well, they finally, when they finally got the camera in there, they were able to spot another wall on the other side. It's only a small passage, tiny, tiny corridor thing that, you know, even this robot can't get into but they could see symbols and the symbols aren't hieroglyphs. So mm -hmm. uh, there's a book that I'll post a link to, if I remember, I'll post a link to, which is, um, is it the pyramid hoax or something, something like that. And it goes into depth about how one of the people that discovered some of the sections that are above the King's chamber, possibly added cartouches himself or him and his team possibly added mm -hmm. hieroglyphs that didn't exist before oh, yeah. because basically they were trying to prove that this thing was built by this certain pharaoh because if it was older then it would disprove the bible because the bible said the earth was six thousand years old and basically they were like there's no way we've got to prove that it was built by mm -hmm. this specific uh this specific person so they yeah, found just... his they, they knew yeah they knew what his hieroglyph looked like and they they copied it basically into the inside mm -hmm. of these Section. Just to add, just to add on to that, we know that well. Uh, official historians acknowledge that even hieroglyphs were overwritten by that example of that one hieroglyph that looks like a helicopter and a spaceship. You know the one I'm talking about. Is it probably one of the ones from Ancient Aliens? It's probably it's one of the ones they use, um, and it totally looks like a a helicopter and a spaceship. 
Um, but the official explanation is that it's two different hieroglyphs overlaid, like they wanted to change it, they overwrit it with something else. Um, and you know, when you look at the overlay, it matches. Further on, we see a temple, the ruins of which are still very superb. So bear in mind, this was not in ruins then when this was written. There mm -hmm. remain four large gates, each of which was supported by eight columns of reddish marbled granite. In the middle of the edifice, there was a building of white marble full of very beautiful figures in low relief. There are still around 160 columns, of which more than two-thirds have fallen. After walking for, uh, for some time among the ruins of one of the greatest cities in the world, we find the beautiful palace represented in figure one. So this isn't even the whole thing. This is just the palace. <laughs> And it says, we find a beautiful palace represented in figure one or four large avenues of columns which lead to as many porticos. What's a portico? I'm, I'm going to open myself up to vulnerability here. Doorways. And admit, I don't know. <laughs> what? Like big arch doorways. doorways. Ah, yeah, right. Yeah, right. Yes, port, of them. course. Port. Oh, port. Welsh port. Of yeah. course. Port means door, doesn't port it? Port means door, yeah. Yeah, of course. Thank you. See, but look, it's always good to be vulnerable to your own stupidity. <laughs> so I open my, myself up there. But each of these avenues is composed of two rows of triple columns, a triangle on the same pedestal. Uh, yeah, okay. Right, that's just bad English. Each of these avenues is composed of two rows of triple columns, a triangle on the same pedestal, which are more than 1,500 in number. What the fuck? It's that's wrong. insane. Yeah, on the capital of each triangle is a sphinx, and on the order of the three columns which follow, a tomb, and so on the four sides successively. Each column is 70 and 10 feet high. 70 is in 70 and 10 feet high. They're 80 feet tall. But why wouldn't they just say 80? French. Of course. <laughs> Fucking yeah, yeah, just suddenly French from year nine came flooding back, like ah oh, yeah, you <laughs> right. It's like ten and twenty and uh, and a five and a one there. Yeah, that? right. Yeah. Do the math. Mo the math. Motherfucker, yeah, just do the math. <laughs> they, they don't think about it. <laughs> it's not that hard. But yeah, <laughs> each column is eighty feet high and made all of a single stone, several of which have fallen so that in the four avenues there must be more more than five to six thousand columns. The first, right, this mm. should be impossible <laughs> to hide, right? Um, let's have a look at the, have a look at Aswan High Dam and have a look at the amount of land behind it that used to be the Nile, but is now Lake Nasser. There oh, no, is. yeah, but, 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 in defense it. of this, they did move some stuff, and in, you can even find articles from the, the 60s, which is, to be fair, before the High Dam, Wait, which one came first? Low dam first, right? Yeah. So it is before the high dam, but it's after the low dam. So these things could have been flooded by low dam. But even in the 60s, yeah. people were writing articles saying, look, you can't do this. You're going to flood loads of loads mm -hmm. of Nubian stuff. And they were like, don't worry, we'll move it. But, <laughs> um, yeah, well, let's just carry on with this figure one. The first room of this palace is all painted with very beautiful historical subjects. You can see hunts, feasts and little children playing with all kinds of animals. There are other apartments all clad in marble, the vaults of which are supported by columns of porphyry and black marble. Black marble. The great ruined city that one discovers from there is what one thinks of as Diospolis or Thebes at a hundred gates. So in modern times, Thebes is considered to be where Luxor is. The ruins mm, of Thebes are considered to be near Luxor. Uh, we've talked a lot about um, this this identification in my videos. I do bring it up. So if you haven't seen my Egypt series, go and watch it and watch from the beginning because I, I'm learning as I make that show. So I make the first episode and it's essentially like, why are all these pyramids here? Mm. Um, <laughs> and then at, through each episode, I, I find out why each thing has been said that way we go through documents like this but not in as much depth the mystery of egypt yeah exactly and we and by the end of it we've built a bit of a narrative which is if you stay through each one you'll be able to build that narrative yourself and see it but mm. so yeah this thing is apparently 
the ruins of Thebes. And we'll look on this map here to show you. This is Nasser, the fortress of the Turks. Mm -hmm. This is the ruins, the Aswana ruins. Oh, in fact, no, sorry. Well, well, that's interesting because they called that one NASA. So there's two Na there's two NASA's because they did call that NASA, didn't they? Said so to the cataracts, we we passed by a small fortress of the Turks mm. called NASA. Yeah. So we have a fortress of the Turks and a NASA. So this could uh -huh. be an error because this What was the name got... NASA from? Because Lake NASA. Because this one shows the same thing, but from the other side. See here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, what are we so looking we at? This... Oriented north. We're, this is us looking south, mm -hmm. and this is yeah. the same same thing facing north. Yeah, there we go. So th that's that Essene that I talked about before, also known as Asna on some uh -huh. maps. So you can see Essene here. So this right. this is essentially it's essentially the same uh, drawing. I think pretty much looks like the same drawing. Just but for... it continues all the way up, continues all the way up to now. So maybe he's used this drawing. Mm. And this is another one, by the way, that shows that Gara Lake and the labyrinth. I love that. So we, mm -hmm. we'll go into that another time. They're way too much. Information. I like how it shows the uh, the gradient. You can see where the mountains are. Like this is in a valley. And on the left, you got yeah. the, you've got one yeah, ledge up. Brilliant. And one ledge up there. Nice. You can see. Yeah, yeah the water's absolutely brilliant. There. Yeah, this one just doesn't have it um, because they've gone way more simplistic with it. But it does look like it was based on the same map. Mm -hmm. When's this? When, when's this one from? Um, so this this map is dated to seventeen twenty, um, and Henry's Henry's thing is from uh, about yeah seventeen nineteen. So these things are from the same period. Mm -hmm. um, exactly same period so yeah it looks like they work together on the same same document um figure two we'll hit up figure two unless there's anything you want to bring up before we move on to figure two i was just thinking about where those i was i'm literally just thinking about where those um cataracts are and is that literally where the dam is today the low dam or just to the left of it on the other side um I think, yeah, no, I think the dam is about here and the old course of the Nile is are these two. So they've cut these off and now it just flows like on this left hand mm -hmm. side. Oh, and this, oh, so this thinking. is, and this, by the way, this is what I, would be, uh, I was talking about when I said that some, some of these maps as well, this is the exact same show. I think it is. Anyway. Oh, actually, no, you can't see it on this one. No, this one fun. just the cataracts but notice how they they do draw these little holes in where it mm -hmm. seems like water's coming out of he, he talked about those shelters you know places you could actually seek shelter inside but mm -hmm. uh, nubius flu and nihilus flu ah oh, right. yes the nubius flu was uh the one which looked like it came off that left side of lake nasa and lake nasa is a big um, yeah yeah and then it follows the ridge of the mountains like it's an old dead course of the Nile, which has obviously just been About, down. Oh, there. here, yes. Like here, it's this one, isn't it? Yep, precisely. And it follows down southwest. Uh, yeah, just so we think it possibly connects up to this. Hmm. Or towards um, down and, south and, towards Chad. Yeah, yeah. very possible. Um, and there's, yeah. uh, there's this as well, this side. Although yes. I think if this, if, the, if this wasn't flooded, this would just be a more even tributary. Hmm. Yeah, but It'd it looks be, like so it's, that it's middle section possible. of the lake uh, where it gets thin up a bit. Like, no, the middle section where it gets thin. Oh, sorry. The, there. Right there, yeah. So that would be around about where the camera is. Based on the map, based on the map, if the river's coming in from the left there and the other one from the right, it's like just coming over this rocky terrain. Yeah, it's, it's very possible. Um, so we have no where idea does about. Google actually comes up? So yeah. it seems to suggest, yeah, this is the actual cataract, apparently the old cataract <coughs> as one. Mm -hmm. So, oh, wait, that's interesting, because if this was considered the cataract, mm -hmm. this is the old course of the Nile. See here? As they say, yeah, and it looks. Yeah, yeah. So this this it went through here, and it created an island. 
So it made mm -hmm. Aswan into a, like an island. We yeah, see so that on some maps. Yeah, like a rocky ground where it keeps splitting for some reason. Well, you can see there's mm. things here. That looks more like Elephantine Island, but I think what we're looking at here is possibly something like this. So you see how mm -hmm. we've got these big sections. Then on Google Earth, that would make sense with that because we've got that. And just for people wondering about the old Somewhere course, I'll, I'll bring that, like that up because uh, considering we're talking about it, I want to actually provide proof of that. That was something I theorized a while ago. And then I found... Um, Found this map. Let's see where uh, I should get to this. Found this sheet 164 as one. This is from 1913. It was actually developed by Egypt. Uh, if we go down here, this section, well, fortunately, if you get that's the statue of Osiris, by the way, that I mentioned, and mm -hmm. the obelisk is there. These are the ancient quarries. Mm -hmm. So you can see how this could be water going. Look at this through there, through there. So the roads now are the three sections. One, two, three. <laughs> Jump over to this map. One, two, three. Three big sections. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah so I'm, th I'm thinking there's a possibility that these could line up to one section flowing there, one section flowing there. But it, it might not be here. It could be further up. <laughs> but this definitely, I found this. This could be image, a lot of yeah. Um, yeah, because I've got to find, I've got to find the the image of this that's in English because it's written in. Um, there it is. Right. Thanks uh, once again. Alamy owns it. Yeah, uh, I'm not even joking. They own yeah. everything. Clearly, the, the high down cut it, cut it off, like stop. Or the, yeah. the low down even that is. We've stop. got the valley filled with sands and gravel, and here it says former course of nile in brackets mm -hmm. so that's your evidence right there former course of the nile this nile came through here and they turned it into a road so that was that was good evidence because without seeing something like that you'd, you'd never really be sure and it's just conjecture isn't it this is henry's map from this book of africa so we can see henry the map that he's provided nice. Yes. So, see here, Sween and mm -hmm. Nasser. So that's Aswan. Yeah. Yeah, Aswan and Nasser. The Grand Cataracts here. Oh, there we go. Those little lines, the diagonal lines. Those are the cataracts. Yeah. Yeah, these, these are the cataracts here. Uh-huh. Um, okay, yeah. yeah, and th th that's Asna, which is the one that I showed is mm -hmm. called uh, Esna or Essene sometimes, and that's the one that's got confused with As um, Aswan on some maps. They've they've some people have mixed them up because mm -hmm. they've got really similar sounding names. Um, so we've got the Nile Fluvius that comes down, and yeah, well, this this implies, like I say, that it's one river, that it's just one river coming down here, going like this, and then and it's flowing spots. off down here, which is what we see today. Yeah, it's, it, this is actually really accurate to what we see. Of the mm -hmm. Nile today, if we look at, um, if we go to Google Earth, oh, not bad. go to Google Earth, and we can see the guy did a pretty good job of mapping that. Mm -hmm. In terms of comes down, goes in a in a curve, goes around like that, um, mm -hmm. and he, you know, he, he's yeah, he's he's done an excellent job. And you can see a lot of mentions of Barabra or Barbarians, Barbarians, mm, the Turk, yep, yeah. yeah. yeah, Barbarians, Turkey, not like from Turkey. This is Turkic peoples from Central and East Asia. Yes, uh, Tart Scythians, Tartars, and too, yeah, Tartars came from Scythians. This, this, right, and uh, we'll talk about this yeah. as well because yeah. whilst whilst this map uh, map is up, notice in Sween on this map there mm -hmm. is there. Is, there's obviously a city sign, but there's no pyramids or anything. And if up in Cairo, we do have our pyramids. But mm -hmm. going back so to this. What year was that map? Quite, this, uh, this map itself is from the same book. So it's 1719. But I think it's based on this guy. Um, I think. I think that's the, the map's based on. Right, yeah. And yeah, on this, again, pyramids. 
shown as being in Aswan, very mm -hmm. specifically noted as being in Aswan, which makes sense because we've just saw how right here, granite ancient quarries, the mm -hmm. um, the obelisk, ancient granite quarries, look at that, obelisks, and they had to get all these things from here up to where the pyramids are built in Cairo. So they had to float them down the Nile. Look at look at the Nile with all these random islands. Would that have been easy for you to whack a giant yeah. obelisk? And just... it's not it's yeah, not it developed gonna well. Something. Yeah, you're gonna beach that boat and lose another one. So we know these are the quarries. They had to get this stuff. They had to get this stuff down. Um, which brings us to, um, well, we need to finish our translations actually. Hey, but it a, will bring us prismid. to where was Prismid? You just went past it. It scrolled on one of them. No. no. Oh right, yeah. So these are the Nori pyramids. Sorry, right. Then these are the yeah the Nori pyramids, um, and down, these are the Fayum Fayum pyramids. Look at that one. That's yeah. the one. Nice. Now, well, what's really interesting about the Medum pyramid is that it has, I think, a very uh, similar feel to the the pyramids of Moris, the late Moris pyramids. So. Mm -hmm is this lake um if we get here this one here the Fayum Fayum Lake is Lake Morris mm -hmm. this is supposedly man-made um this is what's said of King Morris of Egypt mentioned by Greco-Roman historians so King Morris of Egypt was mentioned by Greco-Roman historians Herodotus who visited Egypt in 450 BC recorded that a king named Morris constructed a gateway to the temple of Hephaestus the Egyptian Ptah and dug a large lake in the lake he built more than one pyramid in his library 152 written between 60 and 30 BC Diodorus Siculus mentions a king named Morris who long before the Trojan War excavated a lake of remarkable usefulness near Memphis as well as a canal to provide a reservoir of water and guard against a poor inundation by regulating the Nile. He confirms the place was named Lake Morris in the Fayum after its creator. That's interesting because uh, long before the Trojan War, that must place it around again, these uh, 1000 to 2000 BC era because mm -hmm. officially Trojan War is considered around 1000 BC-ish. But we yeah. think of it more as about 500 BC, maybe 650, yeah. depending. Yeah, um, right. The King Morris is generally considered to have been Amenemet III of the 12th <laughs> dynasty, ruling from 1860 to 1814, who built a series of great water wheels in the Fayum, diverting the Nile into Lake Morris, and established a pyramid at Hawara. During his long rule, Amenemet continued to work the sorry, continued the work probably started by his father, Censuret III, to link the Fayum depression with the Nile. The area had been a mere swamp previously. A canal 9.9 .9 miles long and 0.93, so we'll say one mile wide, was dug, known as Mawur, the Great Canal. It is now known as Bahir Yusuf, the waterway of Yosef. The banks for the central deep side were at a slope of one to a tenth to allow for the use of non-cohesive soil and rock fill. A dam called Harun ran east, uh, sorry, a dam called Harua ran east to west, and the canal was inclined towards the Fayum depression at a slope of 0 0.01 degrees. So the result in it, the resultant yeah. Lake Morris could store 13 billion cubic meters of flood water each year. This immense work of civil engineering was eventually finished by his son Amenamet IV and brought prosperity to Fayum. The area became a breadbasket for the country and continued to be used until 230 BC when Lahun branch of the Nile silted up. And he supposedly built in that time mm. these two pyramids on an island in the center of this lake where him and his wife were buried when they died. And how he, yeah, and he used the canals to get them there. Yes, and he used supposedly these canals, which is the uh, I need to find the canal map. Oh, I need to it's, it's it. just in the chat. 1739, I think. Well, that's when it's published at least. Um, mm -hmm. King Solomon's Holy Land, Syria in Egypt, etc. I find it interesting they call it King Solomon's Holy Land because we know King Solomon was supposed to have built gigantic waterways. Yeah, a gigantic canal system. 
which starts at Thebes. Um, so, I mean, it doesn't start down in uh, in Aswan, which is down here, CN. So, presumably, uh, there wasn't one down there, but we have seen evidence possibly of one down there. But this this one here goes from Thebes all the way up here, takes a left here, and you can see the Canalis goes mm -hmm. off down here to the oasis, the Magna Oasis. So the Great Oasis over here, and that, and there's also a place called Tata there, by the way. <laughs> just interestingly, uh, but yeah, this goes all the way up. Look, all the way up to here, and floods into Murray's Lakes. So it's definitely that one, and it connects back to the Nile. Well, I was going to make this joke before in the chat that what if you built all these amazing canal systems, right, all the way through your country, and everyone's really <laughs> pleased, and then flood waters come. And you realize quickly all you all that you've done is enable the fastest way for the waters to flood your entire country. And you're like, oh no. As you watch the the, the banks burst and everywhere flood. <laughs> and so you're like, we need somewhere for this to fucking go. So they made And that's why they Oh yeah, no, so they oh. Built, yeah. They made okay. this lake. That's what happened. Yeah, they made the lake to act as a flow out, an excess flow out, because they've made wow. all these canals. So when the, the canals are great, but whenever the flood comes, the canals all burst their banks and ruin everything. So they well, had to I come up with a way. the canals were almost a control system for uh, floods. That's where my mind was going. If the Nile's constantly flooding, like, yeah, it's great to do your crops on. But at the same time, if you want to live near Nile, allow that it floods all the time. So you, you're like, oh, let's build some canals to channel off the water and... Because and then as well as one I can't find at the moment, it's the map that mentions the um, the dried the dried sea or dried lake and um, what's it called the petrified boats. That's really interesting. Do you remember the petrified Ooh. boats that I told you about? Yeah, yeah. Saw some pictures. Yeah. Of um, what's interesting as well, by the way, is this lake, Gara Lake. It's completely gone. That doesn't exist today. There is no such mm -hmm. thing. Uh, there is such That's thing good. as a Gara cave, which is around the the right location. So it's, it's very possible that this this has disappeared. This lake. Um, also, the famous labyrinth is was always listed as being on the south of uh, of Morris. But we'll carry on um, to the description. So I've, sh I've shown you the Nori pyramids. Uh, yeah, once again, just before we move on the. Fayum pyramids. You can see the very odd shape to these. Have they rebuilt them on top because they were actually much taller? Yeah. Was in like, you know, yeah, if that it was supposed to go up, but they've gone, oh fuck it. We'll just yeah. build it across that way. Cover it over and just yeah, make it yeah. Oh, I see, yeah. Ran out of bricks. Yeah. <laughs> ran it ran out of bricks. Well, because again, look at the, this image. You're like mm. they're, they're so crazy. The shapes are crazy. But yeah, back back to this translation. Um, where were we up to? It's on this one wasn't it so we've just done no, we'll we'll fly through these so number two this is figure number two here we've got um a pyramid of 56 feet pyramid of 70 feet and oh no 100 feet 100 high, feet and high. 15 yeah, feet was, wide yeah it's, no with the base with the pedestal um pedestal's 15 feet oh well, so it's saying. 100 feet high with the pedestal Minus. Which Minus is fifteen right. feet, so okay. it's eighty-five right, feet all the time. Fifty-six foot pyramid. Look at how thin these pyramids are again. They aren't what we're used to, and this is what the translation says for that. On the side of the desert, which is in the Levant, we discover about twelve great pyramids, which yield nothing to those of Greater Cairo. I give here the designation figure two so that the curious can judge these beautiful remains of the ancient abandoned today. Or oh, sorry, there should be a comma there. The beautiful remains of the ancient abandoned today to the insults of the air and quietly enjoy the search of the travelers who discovered them with so much trouble and risk. One is very simple, as you can see, and the other is decorated with hieroglyphic figures whose meaning it would be difficult to mark. Between the two is an obelisk of red and black granite with a few white spots more than 100 feet high and 15 feet wide below. It was 15 feet wide, according to this. Oh, 15 feet wide. 
Yeah, that's what that's what I thought it said. But it says okay. in the in the text it says between the two is an obelisk of red and black granite with a few white spots more than a hundred feet mm -hmm. high and fifteen feet wide below, which mm -hmm. is still seen standing with another like it. A lone remain of several others, which are around in the old temple, which one sees whilst returning from the cataracts of the Nile. It's in a village called Guadim, where you can still see more than 200 columns, bigger and taller than any you see anywhere. This old temple appears to have been clad in black and white marble. There are several chambers practiced in the wall where there are wells, which apparently served as burials. Between several broken and overturned stones of beautiful size, we see two of them touch stone, more than half in the ground, which represent women. What is above the ground is still more than 16 to 17 feet high. The Arabs have spoiled their faces and they have a ball on their heads. A little further on is another very superb palace with four avenues answering four gates more than 60 feet high. And the residence of kings has become the retreat of serpents. Jesus Christ. This is, this is talking about mad ruins that just do not exist today. We're talking, you know, so let's mm. go over, sorry, what 12 location, pyramids. Please, so, yeah. What was the location? It's saying then? it's near the cataracts Wait. of the Nile on the side right. of the desert, which is on the Levant. Okay, so it's on the it's on the east side. Yeah, which matches what we saw with the pyramids drawn near Aswan. Yeah. Well, they're, they're not there. And hundreds of columns. And that, that they're actually saying is different from Thebes. Oh, and yeah, by the, by the way, I've just realized um, this, how this calls it Thebes, calls Aswan Thebes or the city near Aswan. Uh, this one shows Thebes as, again, as being up in Luxor. <gasps> oh, so maybe this is, maybe this is a, a translation error. Maybe the canal started in Thebes, right? So the map drawer oh. has drawn a canal from Thebes, but it turns out Thebes is actually down here in Aswan. So therefore the canal should be coming from all the way in Aswan, not in Luxor, because that's oh, where Thebes man. was. The original Thebes down here. Yeah, and th that's why when I've shown the maps of Aswan, I show this, mm -hmm. this giant fucking thing that you can see yep, there it right is. there. Yep, it, look at it. Absolute unit. And it's about two and a half miles wide, I guess. And this this thing was known as being a mile wide, the canal. So if that's a bank sloping down, yeah, you know what I mean? If you've got a bank sloping down, there yeah, there's a mile be, there. Oh, you, you, yeah. It's a terrible coloring, but you could have a you could have a canal that wide. Look, fits. You could have a mile wide canal easily yeah. going straight down there. All the way up here, look, goes all the way around here, up here, up it's there. It's a whole yeah, road follows that. You can that see now. it. You can literally see it. Yeah, but the joke is, it's not even like a good road. Mm. <laughs> look, look, that, that's that's their roads. This this is way bigger than a road. Mm. This is monstrous. This is what I'm talking about. This is genuinely this canal. I'm convinced it is. And then it comes up around here. Look, you can still see it flowing. Look, goes all the way around this edge. Floods up mm -hmm. and it's on the left hand side. So, what's the bet that this is very the canal that goes well, up? To very look, yeah, look, yeah. And where does it flood into? Into here, where we're missing a giant lake called Gara that should be here. Now we've got this one, which is possibly, possibly the remains of that lake. So you can see, look, mm -hmm. it floods straight up to there. Look, look at that. Joins up to here, goes all the way up, joins to there. So I'm guessing there would have been a diversion here to take some over to Fayum as well. Yeah, all right. right. Yeah, then, so all of this left bit. Yeah, that's why we've got that. Yeah, I was looking at yeah, that. Yeah, earlier. yeah. And then, and then somehow as well, it goes up to uh, to Cairo to here. So, and we saw the map suggesting it rejoins back up somewhere. Um, we can see that it suggests that it comes back up, meets back up here with the Nile, and then carries on. So maybe it maybe it didn't go all the way up to Cairo. Mm. See the pyramids there. Can... Yeah, it's good to look at it with the um, with the terrain on on Google Maps. That way, you can really see the difference in yeah. Now you can really see the difference in the um, the cliffs where the lake would go all the way up to, and then oh, yeah. around about that borderline, that dotted line would be approximately. Oh, you where can they, see. Oh, look, look. There the almost looks like water yeah. flowed through. Look. Yeah, that would be the what was it? The labyrinth 
in that little gap and then below here looks like where the bigger lake i think Gower yeah 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 I th yeah i think this is where this one fills up and then Gower should be down here yeah i think that's what i was i think these are the same lake and then the, yeah like you said somewhere around here maybe is where um maybe. where our labyrinth wouldn't be but yeah the, on, honestly that is this is the real history of egypt here they've hidden 100 percent to me they've hidden or maybe they just don't realize there's a true story maybe if i'm giving them too much benefit maybe mm -hmm. but this to me if is evidently reports, yeah if, if someone six in the 1600s is reporting false information you know someone in the 1800s is going to think they're reporting something pretty accurately someone in 2000s is going to be like someone in the 1800s they got it pretty accurate and uh, it's still the same today but you know it's just slowly it, changed and slowly changed over the years by one civilization a little bit and then by the next a little bit more in the, the defense of the mysteries. official narrative in the defense of the official narrative there are sections things like this that i think you could very easily look at and say that's a path that's a path of water so <laughs> i won't you know what i mean i will still be critical of myself but <laughs> if you can see that line how straight that moves down down this coast comes to here and then it keeps moving straight down this coast look at how straight that goes all the way down to this section here like mm. and in fact that looks like maybe it splits into two but that definitely when you zoom, it does look like there's two two lanes there i think that there's it looks like there's a an, a set you see here one lane two lanes and then this is land mm. in between i think and then this one goes down like that to here this one stops here this so this one seems to stop here, but this second one carries on right mm -hmm. through there, down all the way to Aswan, and it literally joins where where the, would be. Where the yeah where the Nile and the cataracts would have been here, and obviously water used to flow around this side of Aswan as well. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, when you think that the the, the ancients were writing about it, so where's it gone? Like, unless it was just absolute bullshit, you know what I mean? Like, this dude comes to your country, you, you've already got a 550 foot tall pyramid. So may, maybe that was it. Maybe the guy was like just amazed by the 450 foot tall pyramid. And then he's like, so you got anything else? And the, the, the pharaoh is just there like, yeah, yeah, we used to have this massive canal, you know, you'd have loved it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Set the bar so one. high. Oh, I know the Ark of the Covenant, we had that. And, uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, we had that. We had uh, Atlantis. Yeah, that was us. That was us. <laughs> yeah, right. So this says pyramid, fourteen hundred feet tall. The figure represents a pyramid of extraordinary height, one of the number of those seen near, near Aswana in the map of the Nile. So in Aswan, a fourteen hundred mm -hmm. foot tall pyramid is one of them. The city is ancient Sien, or Sien, which is now inhabited only by poor people. Returning to Nasa, one can see three tombs of sheikhs or Arab signers, from which there we pass to Esne, or Esna, where we see a beautiful temple of the ancient Egyptians, which is still complete. It is painted in all but a few places erased by time and the columns are laden with hieroglyphic figures. This superb building is now used as a barn for oxen, camels, and goats. <laughs> but yeah, by yielding along the Nile, see the place where it is said that Moses was born. It's a pretty big desert place full of palm trees across the river. Yeah, I've noticed that on some of the maps, actually. them saying this is where the Moses was born. Lots of uh, people come mm -hmm. to pay their respects. Further in a mountain, which makes this river make a great curvature, one sees very curious caves cut in the rock, whose doors are for the most part of stone, all of a piece of the same rock. <laughs> caves with stone doors, which open and close again on two pivots. Dude. Good engineer. This is some... Yeah, I'm not kidding. This is some, like, Barney Rubble stuff. <laughs> one sees their paintings as fresh as if they were new and of wells which persuade that these kind of caves were used as burials for the people of the country these sizes represent either their history or the different states of their lives what further confirms this opinion is that in one of these paintings we see the course of the Nile laden with several boats and one of these boats, a tomb which seems entirely cover it, 
covered with very rich fabric. In the others, we see beers ready to be unloaded and priests on the edge of the river waiting to lead them into the caves. One still sees in these caves representations of mummies of stone, marble, or touchstone, as well as several almost twisted columns made of the same rock for the embellishment of the place, and several apartments which go from one in another according to their size. We are likely to find snakes whose bite is dangerous. Um, but yeah, that that's, again, amazing stuff. So going from the from Aswan, we're saying that you've got a 1,400-foot-tall pyramid in Aswan first. 1,400 feet. It, well, this is one of a number, yeah. So one of a number of those seen. Presumably, that would be the tallest, because, you know, you're not going to draw the smallest, are you? But it doesn't, it doesn't specify if the rest are the same height. But as we saw from our image, if we if we zoom out, we look at this, you know, we saw, we saw here, this is what it's insinuating here. These pyramids that I, I'm telling you do not exist today if you go searching for them. You'll find a lot of quarries, a lot of holes where buildings might have been, but you won't find these pyramids. You'll find tombs. You'll find ancient tombs cut into the rocks. You, you will find that. We saw that in one of the pictures. It said tombs, you know, near the statue of Osiris. But mm -hmm. you won't find these pyramids. And that is absolutely amazing that, um, you know, you come from Sien, you've got 1,400 foot tall things, then you've got the tombs of the sheikhs, so Arab sheikhs uh, in the tombs, and then you've got Esen or Esna, where we've got a beautiful temple, absolutely massive, and, you know, that was used for camels and goats and oxen. Yeah, now we move on to figure four, which is our 72 foot high uh, figure with these interesting characters on, which do look like runic Colbrin, don't they? I know, yeah, some of the shapes and then, uh, but then so some of the this, what this says. Gone. Among the number of old palaces one meets on the banks of the Nile, so buried in ruins that one hardly notices their precious, I'm not sure where that's supposed to be, it says precious ones, but one hardly notices how precious they are, one sees several busts of men and women made of stone, the least of which are 30 feet tall. So when I was saying that those things were a colossus that we saw in our images before, mm -hmm. this is this is a uh, written evidence to support that same thing. They're saying that these had several busts that are presumably half buried, made of stone, and the smallest is thirty feet tall. So this is what I'm talking about with these colossal busts. So what we saw was definitely exactly. not the remains of a sphinx. It was a colossal. Uh, mm. bust of a man or a woman, a thirty foot it's tall, the Moai huge man. But, yeah. yeah, literally, because is it maybe they've had to get uh, rid of them, or maybe they've small, been stolen. It's, it's big. You know what? Maybe this is it. Maybe this was a religious endeavor because if man knew that there was a race of bigger beings that came from before, then it just blows out the water or the uh, you know all the religious stuff of man mm -hmm. being the only creation or the creation of god and stuff like that because i mean you've got you've got to understand that the there's two alternatives well there's say three real possibilities but two really one is it's true and one is it's bullshit so one is this is true and one is it's bullshit now obviously you've got different aspects you could have well parts of it are true and parts of it are embellished or mm -hmm. um you know or may, maybe it is just complete bollocks but the guy the guys base some things on some reality and then this traveler, because it is all based on what a traveler told Louis the 14th. Although I can imagine if you're meeting a king, you know, you, you probably wouldn't lie too much no, about what's there. As accurate as possible, because if he finds yeah, out yeah. you're lying, off with your head. Exactly. <laughs> you think, yeah, King Louis is asking me about this place. I'm going to have to tell him the truth. But and it's it's a lot of information. So whoever's been there must have, you know, been writing notes and mm -hmm. saying, "Wow, these." So he's whether or not they're thirty feet tall, who knows? But we we can be sure that somebody's seen many columns, palaces, mm -hmm. colossus heads buried. Because I mean, again, among the number of old palaces, one meets on the banks of the Nile, so buried in ruins, one hardly notices their precious uh, whatever it says. I think it could be wands or stones. One sees several busts of men and women made of stone, the least of which are 30 feet tall. From above, this is the only one drawn because of its extraordinary size. So the one on the screen right now is <laughs> the only one drawn because it was so big and it was 72 feet tall. That's bloody enormous. 72 feet. That's, okay. that's it's about um what what is it? It's about um, an eighth the size of the pyramid. 21.5 meters. 
Christ on a bike. It's a ma massive, absolutely massive, colossal, <laughs> and that fits. It fit well. It fits the images that we were seeing, doesn't it? Let's see if I've got any yeah. other that have a colossus in them. That that one doesn't, does it? No, that's no, not a colossus no. one. This one, there you go. Does, yeah. There you go. That 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 seems about right, doesn't it? Comparing it to big, big old giant pyramids, about thirty foot tall colossus, mm -hmm. and definitely different from the Sphinx. Definitely different from a Sphinx, and um, mm. so it carries on. However, these palaces are not all ruined. We see one among others of extraordinary magnificence, the avenues of which are adorned with a prodigious number of sphinxes. Each of these sphinxes is 24 to 25 feet long. Now, when it said avenue of sphinxes, we I actually did for a second think, oh, wait, that's Luxor, because let's have a look at the avenue of sphinxes. So, well, there's, there's a few things actually about the avenue of sphinxes you might notice. The <laughs> first thing is that it's not... Sphinxes? Oh, yeah. Are they the lions? <laughs> no, they're Roll rams. Players. They're rams. They're fucking the goats. Yeah, it's called the fucking ra uh, Avenue oh, of Sphinxes, God. and it's literal goats. And you're like, where are the sphinxes again? You're like, oh, trust there are sphinxes. Oh, well, man. this is interesting because again, I did talk about Luxor having sphinxes. <laughs> there being a, being two sphinxes maybe in Luxor, and these pyramids being from Luxor, mm -hmm. but it could be, it could be anywhere else because, uh, like, again. They think Luxor is Thebes. So if, if Luxor is the wrong Luxor and Thebes is actually down near Aswan, then, then Luxor might not even be the right place. Um, mm -hmm. Luxor is closest to the Valley of Kings, which, as we know, is, is a literal valley where they buried all their kings in actual tombs because pyramids weren't tombs. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah. So um, I'm, try I'm trying to see how big these... Um, mm -hmm these sphinxes are because no, it doesn't really give as much detail does it do you know what's funny i've just just on a whim i was going down to aswan and then going off to the right slightly to try and figure where these pyramids might be uh you know looking in all the rocky territory and i found this little region where i can see these square or almost rectangle outlines of the base of oh, something yeah. well, it's saying that each of these this avenue of sphinxes which are adorned with a prodigious uh, sorry the avenues of which are adorned so it's multiple it's plural avenues of which are adorned with a prodigious number of sphinxes each 24 to 25 feet long the whole building is supported by beautiful columns and one will judge of its size by one of its halls where one counts up to 135 of them <laughs> made of granite and porphyry so big that four men could not kiss them. So presumably, reach up to the top. Uh, yeah, yeah. As what, the um, exactly. As one descends the Nile, one sees on one side and on the other several small villages in which one sees a quantity of baths and statues. Two of which, among others, are whole on their pedestal at the edge of the river. One of them is holding a child. So there are two large statues, supposedly. Nagado is a nearby town where travellers stop. There are in this place nearly five to six hundred Coptic Christians who have several churches almost all abandoned. There are also plenty of Copts in Beliano, where they have an underground church supported by beautiful columns. It's very extraordinary that in a country delivered to Barbary for so many centuries, is a very extraordinary thing that in a country delivered to Barbary, it's Barbary with a capital B, it's not saying to barbarism, it's saying mm -hmm. to actually a country yeah. owned by Barbary for so many centuries, there remain so many monuments of its former magnificence, whilst elsewhere in the best preserved places, the marbles themselves perish, and with them many monuments later than those of the Egyptians. So this is saying that these monuments are later, older than the Egyptians. Um, and that's, that's the end of the translation for this document. Absolutely brilliant document. Really is for a, to see what they were saying about Egypt in 1719. It's a lot of details. A lot of details about a lot of things that are very different today. So I was looking, obviously we got Aswan up here. And the Nile would have split somewhere around there. Um, cataracts somewhere around this area. Oh, Philae Temple. I didn't notice that before. Oh, yeah, it's gorgeous. Yeah, definitely. 100%. This is just for reference. That is uh, 10 kilometers 
down to this part. 100 kilometers. Don't forget, kilometers. it's still connected. It's still connected here. This bit is still flooded. All of these little crevices, that is the result of flood water. Where does that stretch down to? About here. 300 kilometers. But um, over it. here I'll to the right, assuming the other river comes off to the right, I'm looking at this bit. It's a bit green. You know, clearly there's vegetation there. And just some old, oh, look, an old dam that would cut off that river. And now that's dried up. But follow it up. What have we got? What have we got? This thing, which is square. And there's lots of dirt tracks around it. Uh, and then just over here, another similar thing, overgrown now. But lots of dirt tracks around it. Could these be the bases of old pyramids that used to be in this area off to the right? We've got just a lot of these blocked off, um, dammed off waterways that sort of stop going. Especially up here, and that's you know that's obviously the key to when uh, you've got these dried up rivers and the changing courses. But logic would deduce that um, all these pyramids they're talking about off to the eastern side of the of the old Nile course that would be somewhere over on the right. So I was literally just thinking somewhere around here. Almost looks like a hill fort there. <laughs> it looks very boat shaped there. Yeah. This is an interesting area. Lots of lots of people been around here, lots of tracks. And not a lot of stuff. But these strange bases of something around what just to the right of what used to be a river. Very interesting, isn't it, how it stayed so fertile compared to the land around it. I do mm -hmm. enjoy that. Just a bit of water does a lot of good. And that is a top life tip. <laughs> because they are just littering. As well, uh, one, one of the things that we find loads in Aswan, and I still don't know what they are. I want people to tell me, because I don't think they're anything too crazy. But around there, zoom in, and we'll find one. Right there, you're just on it. Don't move. There's like the little white buildings. Go south. Is it? Is it south of there? You'll find like the um, like military looking buildings. Find the statue of Osiris. There's one right near that. Is it there? There, yeah. To bottom right in the kind of orangey looking bit. There. Orange bit there. Um. <laughs> oh, yeah. These, are. these, these. are everywhere. You'll find them everywhere. And I just I don't get are they sand covers for some kind of electrical grids, electrical stuff? I don't I don't I want to know what they are. Fence around it. I think it's a yeah, military. Like they, they do look very military-esque. They're, they're everywhere around here. You'll find them on the other side of the river and everything. There's, there's a small one on the other side of the river, in fact, that doesn't look connected to the military at all. It's just in the middle of a village. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm not entirely sure what they are, and I'm just interested into what they are because they, they seem to be right on top of anything I want to look at. <laughs> what have we got again? Is there, 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 those, are, those are pretty much on top of... Uh, what I think are some of the tombs of the cataracts. They're listed on the old maps as being tombs. Mm -hmm. So I yeah, don't know whether they're excavations. That, yeah. But these are very peculiar. It's just that's a bit of a museum they've been put together. Uh, they've oh, taken yeah. I remember the old museum. ruins. And just, I remember there being uh, a museum that was closed around there. Um, I don't know what happened with that, but there definitely, yeah, there used to be some kind of museum. But it, it seems to me as if the Egyptian narrative, whatever you mm -hmm. want to call it, the official narrative, has been moved away from where it seems the real information was, which is further up the Nile. Mm -hmm. And it's been moved to this Mediterranean esque area where essentially the Greeks and the Romans stayed. Yeah, they've just moved it further up north. Look at this. Yeah. So, so well, like, yeah, I do. Ooh. Mountain waterfall. Yeah. You can see in this. And then with oh, the yeah, terrain, oh, yeah, and it flows into that. Yeah, that, that's the old course of the Nile. This would be, yeah, one of the cataracts. 
maybe even coming down where the road is now. Yeah, 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 exactly. Because this thing would not have been neat at all by any measures. No, it's just a mess of water through a lot of mess of yeah, rocks. It, yes, exactly. It's just an absolute shit show, but the people understood how to get across, and there was places where you could shelter mm. from the water and sleep and everything. Actually, mm, you can just really see nice. by the contour lines where it comes up. It does come up 200 metres some places, even up to here. Well, exactly. So, yeah, it would have been a literal waterfall. Exactly. Um, and it, these mad bastards went down in rafts. <laughs> Dude, Excellent. this was the, you're looking at the world's first crazy river rapids <laughs> just reminded me because you said late nasa before and i was in a speech and i couldn't i couldn't fucking concentrate <laughs> on it it is very interesting that the for the area was called nasa and the fucking president mm -hmm. was also called nasa mm -hmm. and then named the lake lake nasa after the supposed president at the time who built the yeah that's what i mean he, he, yeah, he named it after himself late nasa yeah or they named it after him the original nasa it's just well, a yeah that's, do you do you really think that they've gone that far though to, is, it, is it a fake story or is it like they've got a president you, called nasa so it How was a convenient from nasa it was just a convenient cover-up just like very convenient if, if in the last 200 years, because this guy was, what, in the 50s? Uh, so, yeah, this guy, you know, he's born in the 20th century. Um, you know, this is enough time for Egypt's history to already have been changed quite a lot. Well, I don't know if it's it, but there's a fortress called Buhen, which is now submerged under Lake Nasa. I'll show us. It's north of the second cataract, so it might be too far south, but it's this is a fortress submerged under the Bloody lake. Bloody hell. Yeah, it's an Egyptian 2,000-year-old fortress submerged under Lake Nasa. That's incredible. Yeah, it's complete. Look at that. Woo! That's submerged now. That's insane. Yep. That's now underwater completely because one guy was like, no, we must have a giant dam. Yep, and that's just one of the things that's been flooded and covered up by that 300 kilometer long strip of dam. That's flooded. insane. Look at the, any Anywhere else, like, well, anywhere else you find that, isn't that like fucking reconstructed and put on, like tourists all week? Yeah, you want to preserve the hell out of that. It's crazy. It's like 19 miles uh, uh, its widest pipe. Port. 19 miles wide. Well, actually, let's this. go for that point. At that point, that? we're up to possibly, you know, 40 miles wide. Or 20, sorry, sorry, kilometers I was reading. It's 20 it miles well. long. That... But yeah, it's a 300-kilometer um... strip of the, uh, of the Nile. Which is basically just over flooded. There we go. So, uh, if anyone wants to read about what I talked about before, this this book was talking about what I was mentioning when I spoke about in the Great Pyramid. One guy in the eighteen hundreds discovered um, the hidden sections above the king's chamber. And there was more than one, so only one was had been ever discovered. The rest had to be blown through with like dynamite and stuff. So when he went in, he discovered these cartouches, which this book will go into it and show you how essentially it looks as if he's actually him and his team have painted these cartouches on themselves. <laughs> and like I said, it goes into how these other symbols were found, these different symbols. I've posted them in the Discord before, and we, we couldn't decode them, remember? Like, they're completely mm -hmm. nothing like we've seen before. And they're discovered deep within the temple. Now, what, what the, the idea was, apparently, is people think they've written written these things on, because what on the side of the blocks, on the inside, you get these things called... Um, they're like... I can't think of the exact word, but they're, they're kind of the excavators or the miners' cartouche. So the miners, they had like a group name. They'd have like a crew name. So mm -hmm. me and you yeah. might be like the ancient historian miners, right? <laughs> and they, they'd get their block. Yeah, their guild. They'd get their block and they'd put their cartouche on the side. And then that cartouche would always be facing the inside 
of these things. <laughs> a maker's but mark. That's a, yeah, it's a maker's mark. But the thing is, is like these things don't they just don't really match like what we're seeing. This idea of a maker's mark of each individual group manufacturing one block and putting the name on the side and stuff. So read this book if you're interested in learning a bit more about that, because obviously it's 228 pages and it's been a while since I've read it myself, so I don't want to get anything wrong. But it is a very yeah. good book to read about what I'm talking about. It only came out in like 2017. Just on a side note, I totally find that I was just going back through the chat looking for the pyramid symbols you found. I came across my own post about the chi ro or kai ro as it's pronounced in Greek. Covered up oh, shit, by yeah. the lakes. Uh, but is that pronounced Kai or is it Z? I thought read, it was Z. Read, read the. Uh, well, I thought it was she or Chi. English, yeah, yeah English Kai pronunciation Ru. Kai Ru. Yeah, Kai Ru. Kai Ru. Yeah. It's like a round. Oh, yeah, because. At the end, when the, that's wrong. Um, that's like a W sound, like Kai Ru. Oh, because it comes from the X from the cri Christo from Greek. Christus. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. But the fact it's called the Cairo symbol. Right, yeah. What well, do you think this makes sense then? Because the Greeks and the Romans take over <laughs> Egypt. The Greeks first. The Greeks mm. take over first. Uh, officially, the Greeks take over with Alexander the Great. But we know that Alexander the Great probably wasn't even Greek. Macedonian, but it, yeah. But that Turk. still could be it could have been a Turk. Kind of well, we saw we've we've been through we, yeah we've been through documents before which painted uh, Alexander the Great oh, as a Turk and they? said that he came from the. Um, do you remember yeah, them? Oh, I recall it. I recall it. Well, this is the thing, and then obviously we've got Wilson and Blackett decoding um, Ramesses the mm Second -hmm. as actually being you know the same as Agamemnon. Doesn't mean that they're Greek, mm. but Ramesses the Second is the one that supposedly has ginger hair, isn't it? They call them all Greek and Egyptian, when really, they're just hiding that they're Scythian. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, yeah, that's the thing. Like, various yeah. Scythian tribes, various Scythian descendants, or whatever let's they call see, them. Let's make, let's make sure this wasn't bullshit, but on the Ramesses II, oh, this is interesting. So this says he's, uh, he's of Berber, I think. Let's get it up on here. All right. I say wiki, yeah. but Ramesses the second. So here we go. The mummy was forensically tested in 1976 by Pierre Fernand Cacaldi, the chief forensic scientist at the Criminal Identification Laboratory of Paris. Cacaldi observed that the mummy had slightly wavy red hair. From this okay. trait, combined with cranial features, he concluded that Ramesses the second was of a Berber type, and hence, according to Cacaldi's analysis, fair skinned. Subsequent microscopic inspection of the roots of Ramesses' hair proved that the king's hair originally was red, which in suggests he came from a family of redheads. This has more than just cosmetic significance. In ancient Egypt, people with red hair were associated with the deity Set, the slayer of Osiris, the evil one, and the name of Ramesses II's father, Seti I, means follower of Seth. Well, here we've got the Berber flag on the left. This is the flag of the Berber people, the Berber nation. And in the right-hand picture, we've got the classic image depicted all over the world. The people depict with, you know, the a, a giant plasma event that possibly happened. So yeah, we also see this symbol uh, painted on the bellies of some Aboriginal tribes. Um, I can't remember. I couldn't link that right now, but um. Yeah, it's just yeah. a classic symbol that's shown all over from a long time ago. A very long time. Like, we're talking several thousand years. A dude with two floating balls. What mm. do you reckon these... They, they said this symbol was um, the plasma cosmologist theory um, suggests that there was some sort of plasma apocalypse, probably from, like, a, a sunburst, like a... What do you call it? Um... You know, a plasma burst from the solar sun. Flare. Solar flare. Yeah, and like in the sky, like northern lights, it made this sort of pattern. And, you know, that's why cultures all over the world saw it, recognized it. You know, it was a repeatable pattern, but, you know, they would have personified it, as cultures tend to do. This mummy. So, Hennet Tau, 
who is from about 1000 BCE, was an ancient Egyptian priestess during the 21st dynasty whose remains were mummified. She is mainly known for being one of the so-called <laughs> cocaine mummies. Yeah, it's, it's the new cocaine bear movie. Um, <laughs> they, they combined that and the mummy to come up with the... Brendan Fraser's back. But yeah, so in, in we'll have a look at the rediscovery. But this was what it was based on Svetlana Balabovnova, um, a German toxicologist who discovered in 1992 the traces of cocaine, hashish, and nicotine on Henrik Tal's hair, as well mm -hmm. as on the hair of several other mummies of the museum. This is significant because the only source for cocaine and nicotine had at that time been considered to be the cocoa and tobacco plants native to the Americas and were not thought to have been present in Africa until after Columbus voyaged to the Americas in 1492. <laughs> so th this is, I mean, it's, it's one of my favorite pieces of evidence when I'm talking about old world Africa, transatlantic crossings in particular. Um, mm -hmm. It, it just, what'd you say to that? But I was reading on about the official explanation, but it could be contamination. Yes, yes, yes. I was just about but, to say know, the result was in at the same time. Uh, I was going to say at the same time, you've got the hieroglyphs found in um, the Grand Canyon, right? There are uh, supposedly. Um, well, and I tell Egyptian you what. Relics. Okay, we'll bring up a few things then. Um, if you could, you do me a favor then, just quickly find me an article or something relating to that. Okay, cool. The findings are controversial because whilst other researchers have also detected the presence of cocaine and nicotine in Egyptian mummies, two successive analyses on other groups of mummies and human remains failed to fully rep reproduce Balabnova's results and some showing positive results only for nicotine. So, what I would argue to that is first off it says that their their debunk is because two analyses on other groups of mummies and human mm -hmm. remains didn't find cocaine they were like well then cocaine was not in the first mummies <laughs> it's like excuse me excuse me my friend if you were to go out if you were to go out tonight <laughs> right in any city right and find a bar and grab one of the people there is like a 50 50 chance that you're gonna find cocaine in their system do you know what i mean like the the fact that cocaine's found once means cocaine's been found yeah contamination is still a debunk it's still an argument against not a debunk it's an argument against you could say it was contaminated okay maybe those guys didn't take cocaine and in fact it says that some of them only showed positive for nicotine like look there's no cocaine in this one just nicotine but nicotine yeah, comes from America. Still, it doesn't <laughs> yeah. matter the argument, there's still something. Yeah. So it's like, well, if, okay, so let's say the nicotine's come from America. That means that they could have had access to cocaine. Mm -hmm. Well, here's the thing, right? What, what do we find in South America? We find the ayahuasca praxis. Okay. Mm -hmm. What do we find in Egypt? Yeah. DMT, the tree of life, right? Okay. Like the, the golden dust that the pharaohs took. So evidently, the pharaohs probably, most likely, would have had access to to mm. things from the South Americans to know about the same practices because they were they were and intertwined they were at one it. point. Maybe yeah, they, they yeah, were fine. They, they, yeah, the alchemy, Kemet, which is the old name for for the mm -hmm. black lands, as in the, the uh, fertile rounds around the Nile. Yeah, the ke Kemet, which is chemistry, chemistry, alchemy. It's from Kemet, from Egypt. Why is it named that? Because they invented it. In 1909, a subterranean city, which was built with the precision of the Great Pyramid, was found by G.E. Kincaid near the Grand Canyon in Arizona. It was big enough to accommodate 50,000 people, and mummified bodies found on the site were of Oriental or possibly Egyptian origin, according to the expedition leader, Professor S.A. Jordan. Numerous artifacts were found, including copper implements as hard as steel. The Smithsonian Institution in Washington, D.C. has ensured these finds remain unknown to the public, and no one would have known about this discovery had it not been for two articles in a local newspaper, the Arizona Gazette, and that's why I remember, in April 5th, 1909, with the title Explorations in the Grand Canyon. So yeah, that is the article I remember reading. One of the debunks obviously the put up one. is... 
yeah, is the uh, the debunk is that newspapers shouldn't be trusted because they print all kinds of shit, which I too, to be fair, I agree with. But mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't mean that it's an immediate debunk. The Gazette claimed that the team had found a vast underground citadel within the Grand Canyon, which was not only the oldest archaeological discovery in the United States, but one of the most valuable in the world. The researcher and author John Rhodes claims to have located this site, and he connects it with Sipapuni, the underground world from where the Hopi Indians claim to have originated. According to their legends, the Hopi once lived within the earth and were fed and clothed by ant people, possibly the extraterrestrials known as the Greys. The Hopi refer to their ancestors as their snake brothers, and their most sacred of underground rituals is the snake dance. Kincaid's narration of the discovery in the Gazette described how he made the discovery whilst traveling alone in a wooden boat down the Colorado River from Green River, Wyoming, to Yuma, looking for minerals. According to the article, about 42 miles up from the El Tovar Crystal Canyon, probably around Marble Canyon in the area of present-day Navajo Indian Reservation, Kincaid noticed stains in the sedimentary formation about 2,000 feet above the riverbed. He then, with great difficulty, made his way up the canyon wall to arrive at a small cave opening, which had steps leading down from it. Kincaid then passed through the entrance, and at a cross chamber 100 feet from the entrance, he found a carved image of a crossed-legged idol, which he thought resembled Buddha and was probably of Tibetan origin. Several hundred feet along with a 12-foot wide passageway, he discovered a crypt containing mummies, one of which he stood up and photographed by flashlight. There was numerous side passages, rooms, and various artifacts, including copper tools, urns, and cups of copper and gold, enameled and glazed pottery vessels, engraved yellow stones strewn all over the floors, and an unknown grey metal resembling platinum. He also found hieroglyphs, which he believed were of an Egyptian or Oriental type. Wow, this is really interesting then. Mm -hmm. Kincaid, summer, uh, Kincaid surmised that more than 50,000 people could have been comfortably accommodated within these caverns. The newspaper mentioned that some of the artifacts had been shipped off to Washington, D.C., and that Smithsonian Institute, under the direction of Professor S.A. Jordan, was carefully investigating the citadel. The discoveries, they claimed, almost conclusively prove that the race which inhabited this mysterious cavern was of oriental origin, possibly from Egypt, tracing back to Ramesses. What is the truth behind this amazing story? Is there any other evidence apart from this isolated and anonymous newspaper article? In fact, there is a previous article in the same newspaper from March 12th, also relating to Kincaid. So I won't go too far into that. This, if anyone wants to read that themselves, you can find it here, a Noma Alien, The Hidden Treasures of Grand Canyon. You'll probably be able to find it and read more. This is the original article. Again, it's noted as being anonymous, which you can take that however way you want. I know there are large sections of the Grand Canyon that they call the Isis Temple. Um, and Or is it Isis Pyramid? Is it Isis Temple, Isis Pyramid? Isis Temple, isn't it? I don't know. I don't know that one. Um, I probably. Yeah. Um, and I know uh, Barney and Julia, they love to talk about this. So yeah. maybe I should get Julia on and ask her to tell us about the ISIS stuff. But mm. um, it's a very interesting notion. I think I'll have to see much more evidence. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe we'll, we'll have to do an episode on it. Maybe we could uh, yeah, spend a week like, researching it. As far as I'm aware, together. this is like the one main thing. Uh, yeah that um ev evidence that i'm aware of there's not much uh not much that i'm off the top of my head one thing that i do know about is the Olmecs. um the olmec heads yeah the olmec heads of the uh mexican kind of mm -hmm. delineation resembling africans there's i've, I've got a small Asians. video that touches on that stuff yeah 100 percent. so the mystery of the copper country mystery this is near michigan um, an estimated 500,000 tons of, uh, of copper are missing from the Kiwina Peninsula and Isle Royal. The copper was removed from pit mines, which range from 5 to 30 feet deep. There are thousands of abandoned pit mines in this range, more than 4,000 on the Isle Royal alone. And these pit mines were worked before 1000 BC for a period of between two to 3,000 years. At about 1250 BC, the activity stopped abruptly. 
these millions of pounds of copper are found nowhere in the North American archaeological record. So you can see here, this is Lake Michigan, sometimes called the, mi the missing Michigan copper and stuff like that. But mm -hmm. this is Isle Royal. And yes, the, so this amounts for, I, I don't want to quote numbers without knowing, this amounts for a huge amount of the copper available to the world is 500,000 tons. Mm -hmm. I think it's it's something like 90% of the copper that was actually on the site. And what's nuts about this place is you'll actually find gigantic, I'm talking massive, boulders of just copper ore just on, on the side of the river. And I'm not sure, obviously, if you'll still find that kind of stuff. But they did do, and I'll get it. I'll get up the picture of the the biggest one. This talks about it. So if you want to know more about float copper in Michigan, it literally, yeah, it talks about this copper and how it's um essentially popped up, <laughs> popped up in the middle of the ground, and you've got these giant bricks of it. This just explains. And this is the biggest, the Ontonagon Boulder, a glacially transported mass of float copper about three and a half feet across, visited. <laughs> by early European explorers. So this is one of the biggest pieces. Apparently, some people say that there's actually a bigger piece that was sold to China and is currently in China, but I can't <laughs> substantiate that claim. Um, China, got our copper, got our float copper, nasty people. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, literally, these these things were just laying there for people just to turn up and use. So the people around could have hypothetically had access to ground level float copper for for whatever they needed. And this this mm -hmm. is it's just just a giant block of metal ready to be worked. Yes, um, very 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 convenient. And like I say, five hundred thousand tons of it are missing. Okay, and that's between. Uh, a period from before 1000 BC going to about 4000 BC. Mm -hmm. So up to 4000 BC, you've got people working 500,000 tons of copper out of the ground. And some people have suggested that the, the Bronze Age, as we see it, particularly in Europe and Egypt and around the Mediterranean and stuff like that, basically the amount of copper we see coming out of the ground is too much. And it's come from somewhere else, uh, mm. possibly being transported already from America. These are just like right uh, the theories at this point. Yeah, it's the second intermediate period of Egypt, which is regarded as a golden age. Exactly. Go golden age. And uh, this is unrelated to the Egyptians. But one of the things we uh, we do know is the Roman amphora, which was found in Brazil. I'll bring that up. This is, again, disputed. Mm -hmm. um, it, fucking, it's like Guanavara Bay, but I'm going to just put Brazil so I don't sound like an idiot. Artifacts found in a bay near Rio de Janeiro may mark the wreck of a Roman ship that could have reached Brazil 17 centuries before Portuguese adventurers discovered the region, according to a leading underwater archaeologist. A large accumulation of amphoras or tall jars of the type carried by Roman ships in the 2nd century BC has been found in the Guanabara Bay. It was 15 miles from Rio de Janeiro, according to the archaeologist Robert Marx, who is a well-known hunter of sunken treasure. <laughs> the Portuguese navigator Pedro Alvarez Cabral is generally credited as, having, as being the first European to reach Brazil in the year 1500. Mr. Mark said yesterday that the Portuguese authorities were trying to block Brazil from issuing him a permit to excavate the wreck he thinks is buried there. Like the five-gallon jerry can, amphoras are tall jars tapering to the bottom and are usually fitted with twin handles. As described by Mr. Marx, they were to the ancient Greeks, Romans, and Phoenicians what the five-gallon jerry can was to the mobile units in World War II. They were used to carry wine, oil, water, or grain on long voyages. Mr. Marx, the author of many books and articles on early exploration and underwater archaeology, believes the amphoras were carried to Brazil on a Roman ship that was blown off course. It may have anchored off Rio, then been driven by a storm onto the reef near where the amphoras now lie. Now, mm. unfortunately, since 1982, that guy actually got banned from Brazil, um, accused of being a th uh, an artifact theft. Right. And and they banned him. And uh, they also filled the air the bay with, I, I believe, concrete. They dropped oh, concrete geez. in. 
Right. Fill, filled it in, and they declared no diving for the safety of divers in the area. So oh, take wow. that as what you want. They said that he planted the stuff there, but he also stole stuff because <laughs> he had, you know, he had pictures of the jars. He had actual jars. They, so he, he had the jars in his hands. He, he found the jars. It's not like he just <laughs> said he found the jars, but they tried saying, "No, you didn't." He planted those, and then he stole them. <laughs> You're banned. Let me cover it up. Cover up everything you planted that you also stole. Yeah, no. yeah, literally. Those aren't real. They're not from here. Yes, they are. Then you stole them. <laughs> like, Take wait, what? And yeah, eat it. Now, well, this is the thing, right? Um, I don't, I don't want to be one of those people that pushes every theory and tries to convince it is real, even if it's easily debunkable. I'm not saying mm -hmm. that. Maybe Absolutely. this is. There's so many people that fake things. Yep. But maybe like, this guy was going hunter. to take it. Yeah, if you're a treasure hunter, of course you're going to take something. You know, there, there are definitely some people out there going to go, oh, I'm going to keep some of that. And maybe, Although, you know, to be fair, yeah. if, if, like, imagine they did organize a dig and they went down and there was no boat, he'd look like a moron. <laughs> you know what I mean? Just a load of Roman amphora and no boat or anything. Don't be like, oh, well, you're a bit of an idiot then, aren't you? Still Roman. But well, they'd figure it out they, if they if they uh, went down and did a dig, they'd be able to figure it out, wouldn't they? They'd be like, "There's oh, yeah, no yeah. way these these things." There's there's Roman amphora buried one foot down. It, mm. You know, there'd be way more sediment on top. Just they'd be able to debunk it. it, and well, this is what I mean. So it but seems like it, especially. Well, you, maybe, like I say, the there's there's, there's arguments for for both sides why he could yeah. have been bullshit and or why he couldn't, but. So, and then there's also what's the other one? The um, so the old Borum shipwreck is a late Bronze Age shipwreck that dated to the uh, 14th century BC, discovered near Turkey in the Meds. So it's got a little map. You can see it here now. The inspection team was able to locate several amounts of copper ingots just 50 meters from the shore. Um, is that the only mention of copper? No. So we've got copper and tin ingots that were found. Um, raw copper. 121 copper bun and oval ingots. Um, and then apparently their analysis indicates that it's sourced in Cyprus. But there were disputing reports that according to uh, to some people, this was actually that float copper that was found or other types of copper that can only be found in Michigan. It's mm. called Michigan copper. Michigan copper can be found to have gold or silver in it which means it only came from Michigan because the only place they found that in the world where gold or silver particles have been found in the copper is in Michigan, in America. Mm -hmm. So any, any copper that they find in the world that's got gold or silver traces probably came from there. Um, mm -hmm. And that is what apparently was found on this Alburum wreck. There's somebody mm -hmm. asking about it here. So this author, Graham Hancock, indicates that an ancient shipwreck was found in the Mediterranean with a copper so pure that its only possible source is the peninsula of Michigan. So, so this person is obviously going to be knocking it down, saying it doesn't come from there. Um, <laughs> and it's pseudo-archaeology, as they, as they you know, <laughs> usually call it. But the only reason I was looking was because I was trying to remember who it was that made the claim that the Michigan copper was found aboard the Alboran wreck. Right. And it was Graham Hancock. So mm -hmm. that that's the that's the the person, and I'm, I believe I've heard people make that claim way before. But he's, he's popularizing it right now. Well, he I think he popularized it in like 2002, 2004. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so it said, yeah, so it yeah, said. yeah. So uh, in one of his books back then, so this indication being, but he specifies it's because of purity. Um, I can't remember mm -hmm. the quote or where I got the source on the gold or silver particle. Uh, right, yeah things being bit but it that's supposed to be a thing if i'm wrong please correct me down below feel free but that's mm -hmm. what i'd read that it's uh the only place where you can find the copper <laughs> like say with gold and silver particles as much as it's like the it. source absolutely everything at the end of the day it's... we are going into a backlog of memory just you know yeah i know it's so difficult isn't it <laughs> yeah so anyway well, uh, that is, like, egypt is fucking everywhere early on and you've got it's, to me, coming. it's one of the most oh, interesting places. Just like it's among the oldest civilizations, you know, it's not the oldest. You know, you've got Babylon before, uh, 
we've got uh, bloody going all the way back to go back to Tepe, you know. Um, but of the major old, old world civilizations, Babylon, Assyria, um, I don't know, all, the, all the civilizations, Mesopotamia. And we have a Babylon as well in Egypt, don't we? Um, at some point. Bar, bar, yes. bar. No, it's, it appears on all the maps. Literally, no, this one doesn't have it. I was checking this one, but um, it usually appears. I wonder if Ooh. this one's got it. Just remind me of the Higher Salem. Oh, yeah, Higher Salem. Kurus Salem. Uh, it's, yeah, it's, yeah, it's very interesting that. Um, and they also they call the king the king of Salem. So it's uh, that for me because they in that thing that you sent, they said mm -hmm. um, king of Salem, that is king of peace. And it's like it, it, he's not the king of peace, though, is he? He's not. He's the <laughs> king of the place called Salem, right? Oh, yeah. It's higher Salem. He's the king of Salem. But it's almost like it, it's almost like oh, historians yeah. always want to oh, like be like it's it's it just means peace, but it's it's place. Yeah, because Jeru is higher, it's Kair, it's literally just city or castle. So the actual place is Salem, the castle mm -hmm. of Salem, and he might be Salem. So it might be the fact that it's the castle of the king of Salem. So King Salem, castle of Salem, or Salem. Mm -hmm. Here we go. Or the Here other we go. way. We got it. Cool. Yeah, there, we go. Yeah, there we go. So we go. Um, in this book, the history of. Let's just get it up. History of the world, account of time. Um, down here, we're talking, oh, we're just going through all the time periods in this first half of the book. Uh, lastly, Jerusalem is built by Mel Melchizedek, king of righteousness and spirits of vigor, and king of, king of Salem, that is king of peace, effect of the formula, which standing among the Jebusites, is named after Jerusalem, uh, or, and a letter being altered, Hierusalem, or a city of peace. On Mount Sion, uh, which gives a good old description, but yeah, Hierusalem, just like hieroglyphics, uh, hieratic, all, all the wow. hierarchy words that date back to Egypt, H I E R, but then also Kaya, Kaya Salem, like the Kaya Salem we find in Wales, C I A E R, and you know, you got the Welsh. Egyptian link through the priests, priestesses of Arwen. Yeah, just this whole yeah, link wow, between Jerusalem, Egypt, Wales. Cool little link. Well, especially when you bring in the hieroglyphs, the the Colbrin, the Babylonians, because I mean, from from Babylon to Britain, is you know, mm -hmm. is a great, a great way to see it because it's just it's just everywhere. I mean, what we've learned about today is is blowing my mind so I'm, i mean i'm just thinking about it we've we've seen shall i uh shall i take back the screen yeah or, go for it i was just showing all those little uh, things how do i exit full screen there we go um add to the stage so yeah we've seen on this article alone oh, like what do we even talk about this gigantic ruined uh, city that's near aswan we've got well, a yeah, let's, let's go. Earlier. we've got uh we've got Nubia yeah a fortress of the crazy. turks this with this NASA fortress as well, which what does that say there for me? It's garrisoned by Janissaris or Garnison. Yes. Yeah, 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 it's uh, guarded by Janissaris. I don't know what that word means, but it's guarded by a garrison. Uh, it's that says Garnison, right? Yeah, Garrison. That's, That's an M. Janissary, a unique unit of the Ottoman Empire. So yeah, so you're telling me that NASA Fortress is guarded by Ottomans. Yes. And over on this side, Fortress to Turks. I think that this map maker has duplicated this. Oh well, maybe, but I think they've duplicated this this thing because in the text he said maybe, that NASA yeah. was was the fortress of the Turks. And this person is called NASA and uh, yeah, I think he's I think he's duped it because you see you see this again and again um but i mean nasa is still listed so it could be it could be a mistake one's a fortress of the turks and the other's nasa or maybe they're both fortresses of the turks we don't really know but what we do know is that there is turkish turkish forts arab tombs of the sheikhs so the sheikhs of the tombs are there 
not Turkish. Turkic. Turkic. Sorry, Turkic. Yeah, right. Two Turkic distinct forts. different peoples. And tombs of the sheikhs, the ruins of Aswan, and pyramids. Now, what did we learn about <laughs> fucking pyramids? This is the uh, well. First off, thieves, the ruins. These are apparently Thebes, or if they're not, it's ancient Seen. But they say they seem to suggest it's the same place, Seen and Thebes. But Thebes could mm -hmm. be Luxor. So again, this is how fucked Egyptian history is. Yes. It's just gone. Yeah, hundreds of columns, hundreds, of, if not thousands of columns were listed. Is that six thousand down there? Five to six thousand. Yeah, five to six thousand. Yeah, five to six thousand columns. Uh, this is just the, the palace in the middle. Presumably, this used to have roofs going all the way down, you know, and mm. th this was massive, absolutely. Massive. And then just to tell you that the tiny ruins of buildings around it compared to this magnificent palace, which was still <laughs> painted, still had paintings in it and stuff. Just to think how fucking awesome this place is. And then they talk about the pyramids, these gigantic columns that they keep finding everywhere, columns up to 100 feet tall and 15 feet wide at the base, 56-foot pyramid, 70-foot pyramid, and he indicated that these pyramids were had hieroglyphs that didn't make sense, like they weren't like normal hieroglyphs. And then to go in that same theme, we find the Colossus, the smallest of which being 30 feet. Loads of these in loads of palaces, destroyed and not. 30 feet to 72. The biggest is 72 feet tall with these, Enormous. again, strange inscriptions. These could be just, like say, artistic impression. He's, he's had to write inscriptions that mean nothing, so he's taken some runic example, perhaps. Maybe it but was I mean, Colbert. Should... That was his best guess. Maybe you should give it a fucking little decode yourself, mate. I think you could do it. Um, and then the, the real beauty, the 14,000, sorry, the 1,400 <laughs> foot, 14,000. I'm doing a Trump there on a Fox News. 14,000 feet. That's what they tell me. Um, pyramid, 1,400 feet tall. One of the pyramids seen at Aswan. So that is one of these pyramids down here. And now, whoever's saying this, so whoever's saying this to the court of Louis, King Louis the Fourteenth, he was near Aswan with people, and he's saying, "Oh yeah, there's pyramids there, mate. Fourteen hundred feet tall, loads of them. You know, there's why well, you can't exactly bullshit that. If this anyone one. else is from Egypt, they'd be like, no, there isn't. What are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, this is just an enormous, an enormous civilization that we're capable." saw the canals we had the idea of this uh you know we've got to bring up these massive stones from aswan like the obelisk you know they've got to get up all the way up to cairo up here yeah you wouldn't want to take out the wobbly rocky no, yeah. you're not you're going to be wanting to go path. around this yeah, yeah exactly yeah you're going to want a nice straight massive canal that takes you anywhere you want to go to build your pyramids on the way, build everything, get it all the way up here. And, you know, and that evidently, I mean, look here. Um, mm -hmm. I yeah, think these look like I, little canals. You see these black they, pads? They're going up past Fayoum as well, yeah. Up to the lake, Lake Maris. Yeah, yeah, they are, the connections, yeah. So this this definitely looks like that that same thing. But once again, th th this one seems to stop there in near Hus. Mm -hmm. It doesn't, um, mm -hmm. yeah, which is the same, I think, around a similar place to what we saw earlier, Mansalu. So, yeah, this this was definitely one giant canal that they've mm -hmm. built. I've just noticed Benny just... Salem on, on that map that you've got up on the screen right now. Uh, at the top, near yeah, the top of the screen. Oh, well, there's that too, where your mouse is. Benny Sailor N, but then up, scroll up. There we go. Just above. Benny Salam. Benny Salam. Look at that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There's Tata. What, is, what does that say for us? Can you read that? The so serpent. the famous caves of the serpent, oh, the serpent. mines yeah. of, the, uh, of the prime emeralds or the, the best mm -hmm. emeralds, I guess. Prime. It's prime. So there you Everyone's go. Yeah. Figures that are thirty to forty feet tall on the right. Just oh, you... oh, yeah. Also, also, also. This is one of the ones I liked. Notice how Luxor distinctly has its mm -hmm. own pyramid. Look, we can see what a pyramid looks nice. like. We know that's what a pyramid is. And Luxor, for some reason, has a pyramid. 
this drawing here is absolutely gorgeous because what do we see we see the flow of the nile going down loads oh, of my. pyramids on this course is that an astorian pagoda that uh, all, wait, wait. No, no, this that that right there they look like them don't they but they have Ottoman, um, Ottoman See, moons on the top. Those look different, but that one on the left. Well, that that one's different, that, but that one yeah. is an Ottoman moon on the top. That's not on the moon. That's not on the moon. And then the one on the left looks like. Oh yeah, there, it. yeah, Ottoman moon there. No, I mean. Uh, oh yeah, there, yeah, shit, towers. Ottoman moon there. But the big tall yeah. tower, the thick one, doesn't have that. It looks like <laughs> a Victorian to me. Look, looks a bit like a Himalayan tower. Yeah, that too. That too. Um. And then this, this oh. looks distinctly mm. like gothic architecture to me. Oh, that's crazy. It's... You know, the the mm -hmm. arches, they resemble the gothic kind of similar arches that we see on the gothic churches, I feel. That's very pyramid-like, but again, doesn't have a cap. Mm. Um, yeah, sorry, back on the left, you were showing. Yeah, back on the left. Well, what do we see? So this is interesting because this is this is the the same similarish view as what we saw earlier of Giza, but obviously if you're at Giza, it would be impossible to see the cataracts of the Nile. Now maybe <laughs> it's an artistic impre artist impression, but yeah, yeah, what do we yeah. see? We see a sphinx facing the wrong way, facing away from the water. The sphinx has wings, and uh, it looks like a headdress. So it is it, mm -hmm. it could be hair, but it kind of looks like a headdress. So maybe it's Arabic. I don't know. Um, and then over here is just what they were talking about: the colossus heads <laughs> on pedestals, thirty to seventy-two foot heads. Literally, what we've just seen on so all this of this page. is just down south. Huh? Look, right? Yeah, look, look. So just what we saw here. This is exactly what this person was talking about. He, the, the traveler, saw them. And this person has drawn this one that's located in between some pyramids. It's got short hair, just like we saw mm -hmm. before. You know, uh, that short-haired colossus. It's got mm -hmm. short hair. Looks like a dude. No tits on it. Um, evidently, if it's, you know, if, if it's a woman, they'll give you a nice pair to have a look at. But these <laughs> are the pyramids. And again, up, up at B, it says... Um... Oh, that's in bloody German. <laughs> but... I'm not going to with pyramid in antique <laughs> that says the waterfall of the nile anyway waterfall of the cataracts of the nile these are the uh the pyramids the i used to know what this said um where where is c um i'm not sure but yeah it's again though you can see more pyramids in the distance one here without a cap one there that cap um is that, that the is supposed to be our... it is <laughs> that's our turkish fort okay and then on this side is the ruins of um, of Thebes, or what they say is Thebes. And beyond it are the more pyramids that are next to the thing, the ones that we saw. So on this map, that's exact, not that map, on this map, it's exactly what it was showing us up here. So if we imagine, where's Luxor? Right, we imagine Luxor's here. So let's have a look at the actual bends and think that somebody's mm. drawn from about here. One pyramid on the left. Obviously, we don't have the ones on the uh, sorry on the right. We don't have ones on the left, but we have this one pyramid on the right. Then, in the distance, pyramids on the left. So we've got a similar view of this Those curving the river. Path, yeah. yeah, pyramids on the well. That far one, I think, is is that one that is representing these. So the far one there, mm. this back one is representing these. There. So that means if we can see the fortress over here and the river does turn, how many? One, two, three, three turns. We can see it come. There's one, two. So we're on about the second-ish turn if we if we based it just uh -huh. off that map, yeah, which yeah. is probably not a good idea to do. But one, two, so we're about here where Luxor is. We've got Luxor. We're at literally, we're about here looking at Luxor, the side of Luxor, and down, looking at like a left angle down. Really now, in real life, that's not that's not going to work because, you know, have a look at um, there's Aswan, and Luxor is there. So yeah, you know, in, yeah. in you know, you're, you're not really going to get that work. But mm -hmm. it's everywhere between Luxor, Esna, uh, Edfu temples. You know, Kom uh, Kom Umbu, which we mentioned earlier, didn't we? 
Um, mm, did we? We were talking about Common Boo because that's the what's the name Talks of that? The the chat that we didn't. I don't know if we even. What was it? Come there was a river well, that rejoined. Around. There was a river that split at Aswan and rejoined at Common Boo. Yeah, so that was called, I think, Contra Ombos. Yeah, so it's called Contra Ombos on the old map. Mm-hmm. But yeah, um, we've it's, got that it's just absolutely... underneath the uh, Lake NASA, and we talked about NASA. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Giant fortress uh, that's flooded. Everything. I mean, tell you what, there's look at Egypt. look at look Too between much. those. Uh, do you see all the doors? The caves and the uh oh yes 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 yeah so they're <laughs> representing look going up caves into the waterfall waterfall caves tombs places shelters everything granite obelisk bloody quarries on the side buildings and palaces made of white and black marble with no one living there some being used as oxen farms and places to store your goats and shit absolutely incredible so shall we call that the end I think we shall, yeah, we've covered a lot. We got all Oh, the this to... one, by the way, as well. Yeah. This one, I just forgot. This shows the island in the middle of Murray's mm-hmm. Lake just before we finish. Yeah, and it shows to have some ruins, Rudera. And obviously that island is the one that I showed you with the two supposed giant pyramids built by mm-hmm. King Morris in the middle of his lake. And yeah. So thanks uh, to everyone watching. Thanks to mm. Yayan for, for being here. Thank it's you, a great, great little episode. I've learned a lot. I did have fun. learned a lot. Did you? Yeah, you get, yeah, I did. You know what? You've basically <laughs> just had to take part in a three and a half hour ancient historia lesson. Yeah, that was good fun. Four good. hour, four hour. Well, I mean, if you cut out the bullshit, yeah. So you, you've you've basically yeah. gone to class today. That was good. That was good. Right. Anyway, well, thanks for being with me, bro. Yeah, it's sleep time now. <laughs> Definitely. So thanks yeah. to all the people watching. Um, I don't think I'll do an outro. I'll just end it abruptly mid-sentence.